And we should be live. Can everyone hear us in the chat? Because I'm getting an... Chat chads, let us know. There we go. Yeah, they hear us. Alrighty, awesome. So we're live with Instalmatic support for July special. Uh, graphics by Jet112 on our server, and uh, we have Franco McCoy and Espio live. We're going to be taking callers uh, for 15 minutes each, but we're going to start with some topics for today. Uh, Frank or uh, Espio, do you want to introduce the first topic? Yeah, sure. First of all, I want to say, hey, thanks for having me on. I appreciate you coming on on uh, 4th of July. Uh, There's a lot of time, a lot, a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of guys out there like uh, without families nearby. Maybe they moved away from the families to go to school or they you know, just don't have anything to do. So we appreciate uh, you being on for us all, giving us something to, hang, something to hang out with. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of men don't have that anymore. And uh, it's the suicides that go up during the holidays. So, you know, it's a good time to have a stream and uh, let everybody cope. Yeah, so um, uh, the first topic is the um, – uh, go, 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 can you do the first one? Yeah, I can do the first one. So it is uh... – Oh, wait, I got it. I got it. It says um, – okay, uh, from uh, Reddit. It's a post from Reddit. It says, uh, as someone working in the industry, the, the restaurant industry – we are we are we are fucked. Even here in England, with all the new rules, etc., the already slim profit margins in the industry are being squeezed to a level where, where come winter, where outside trade is no longer possible. You will see. I'm going to hazard a guess at a ballpark figure of 60 plus percent of pubs and other establishments going under permanently. I think the major issue amongst the catering industry: a large number of people are misfits. And it's one of the few employers I know where a criminal record is not seen as something barring a person from employment. This is purely anecdotal. With many of us being unemployed, I see it as being easy for people to fall back into or become more deeply involved in crime. And I think this would cause a further degradation of the social contract and cause a spike in uh, all sorts of crime, violent and nonviolent. This is this is not my words. This is a, a post on Reddit. What do you guys think? Yeah, it's uh, from personal experience. You know, go ahead. Go ahead, Franco. I'm gonna get this image up while you yeah, talk. Yeah, from personal experience. Yeah, from personal experience. I mean, it's it's stuff like the restaurant industry, bartenders, casinos, all that kind of service industry shit, where people can kind of run from their past. They whatever they did in their past, they can they can still make a decent living. I know bartenders is like the ultimate trope, where like these guys can make six figures if you're in the right. Vegas is one of those places I'm thinking of, where a bartender can make six figures and have a criminal record and not be, I mean, not of course be a total fucking shithead, but like, you know, he has a, a misdemeanor or something like that. Um, yeah. I've seen, but, I've uh, seen a lot of women, uh, you know, quit, they have uh, you know, stable jobs and they get fired cause they, they don't, they only, they call in sick like once a month. So they get fired and they say, you know, well, F you, I'm going back to bartending cause I make $200 in tips in one night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they, they try to they try to go straight for a while, and, and then some some office job fucks them over, and they go back to bartending. It's 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 a nice fallback for a lot of people, which no one has anymore. I know, um, yeah, the service industry is always a fallback for people, which I mean, it's not there anymore. Yeah, but yeah, people people are gonna start stop. Um being so generous with their money giving these tips i mean someone grabs you a beer and pops the top off and you give them uh six dollars for the beer and then a two dollar tip i mean seven dollars for a beer when that beer would i mean it's just it, this kind yeah. of stuff when we go into hard times this kind of these kind of jobs popping beer bottle off and, and looking cute for for customers being a bartender <laughs> this kind of stuff is going to go away you're gonna have to have a skills in the future that's a good point that's a good point i, I mean 
that's why every bartender you see right now is a female. I mean, I remember I'm in my 30s, and, and in the beginning of, of, of that, when I was 21, you see you see male bartenders. I never see male bartenders anymore because you got to look cute, and if you look cute, you get the extra couple bucks. But that doesn't that's not going to cut it anymore in acceleration land, which where we're living right now. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I haven't seen uh, the prevalence of male bartenders. Maybe when in the past it used to be maybe a 70-30 split. It's more like a 90-10 split now. Yeah, uh, female Easily. bartenders, they just bring in way more income. That's why females have an inherent advantage in the service industry. So if you are if you own a bar and you're trying to be competitive, you're going to try to hire as many females as you can. Um, each female is going to be earning way more tips. This is already known. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, yeah. first, not not even just bars. Uh, even like a, I know a grocery store manager in a small town. He would put all the females as the cashiers, and he would have all the males as freight, you know, stocking, like uh, hauling <laughs> cans of be- uh, uh, boxes of beans and placing them, in, you know, taking freight off the trucks. You know, all the males were for that, and all the females were cashiers. Yeah, cock cocks cocks get to be the uh, the the muscle. Yeah, you are the indentured servitude i i got an interesting anecdote i worked at a hotel for a while with had of course restaurant it was a higher higher end hotel and the males the male waiters try to start a uh tip pool so that everyone would get kind of an equivalent amount of tips and the female waitresses are like fuck no of course they said that because they were the ones getting way more tips and the males wanted the tip pool so they could get a piece of their tips and so what happened was the tip pool never happened because the females pushed back way far against that because they knew they were getting way. They, they weren't stupid. They knew they were getting way more tips than the males because they had fucking. They, they had the, the right equipment. Um. Yeah. Uh, you know what's interesting about all these closures? Um. That this is what I brought up the topic is because all the stuff that's closing that he mentions. So we have bars, restaurants. Um, you know, tons, tons of the stuff. This is all the first, like your second, first date, your, your dates, right? This is where the dates happen. <laughs> so the con, the dating economy is literally shutting down. If you're a normie type of guy or really any guy, you're trying, you're going to have to go in a dating market and go on multiple dates. That's how it really, that's how it works. I mean, traditionally, right? In this yeah. kind of modernity and all this, all these venues are closing down. And what this does is it pushes everybody online, and we know what happens really online. It is pretty. Uh, it's where the males aren't satisfied at all, but the females are still satisfied because they're receiving attention and uh, validation. But it, so the, basically, the date like dating is becoming a thing of the past, especially with the coronavirus, especially with these riots burning down businesses. These industries are just not set to recover. They operated on such thin margins already in the past. Um, they were very it's it's extremely competitive starting eatery a bar i mean those are probably the common businesses people know how to start uh the you know the the intellect barrier to entry is not that high so it it's how how will people manage to even date anymore is the question it's there's going to be a total collapse of that yeah i mean right now it's like <sighs> hiking i guess is, is <laughs> how, how far is how far is hiking gonna get you you know uh yeah that's a good point because because females they always want to meet and it's it's it's, it's natural because they, they always say on these dating apps at least uh the male's biggest fear is she's going to be a fat bitch and the female's biggest fear is going to be a serial killer which is i think pretty fair but <laughs> if that's her if that's her biggest fear then she's going to want to meet in a public place for the first date. And wh- where do you meet for that? Fucking a park? Where do you meet for that? You're not going to fucking impress a chick with a fucking public park, which it, it shouldn't be that way, but that's the way it is. Yeah, it's usually a bar, a uh, coffee place, uh, all these places that are being, they're not going to make it. They're not going to make it this, um, especially in America where we just had a shutdown. That brought everyone to its knees. We had riots that brought them, you know, on one knee, and then now it's like you're about to have no knees once the second sh- uh, shutdown happens. <laughs> uh, it's just I don't see how these businesses are going to recover unless we get extra stimulus. But if these don't, it, it is really the end of the dating. Um, it's going to push a lot more guys into the insular sphere. 
um, because these normie guys that relied on these dating venues, um, they will no longer be able to rely on that. That is just not going to be an option. And these girls, they don't have to go on on dates because their primary their primary um, reason for being on online dating, and this is already documented, is for validation and reassuring themselves. Maybe they broke up with an ex and they're looking for that next feel of validation. You know, maybe they're just feeling bad about life. So, you know, some of any, so many of them get off and leave online dating just because they're oversaturated with options. So it's really not going to motivate females to go out anymore, especially they're the ones that are more scared of the coronavirus from what I've seen. Yeah. So, Kanye 2020 is going to solve it all. Yeah. Kanye 2020. I saw that announcement. I, I was, I was hinting that at for a couple of months now and uh, <laughs> I'm very surprised and uh, I'm happily surprised. SP, do you have anything uh, to say on this topic? Well, I was just wondering, like, what do you think? What do you guys think? Um, do you think this? I think this is going to affect women more than men because I, I, I think men tend to uh, gravitate towards th things with some skill. So I think I'm not trying to insult people, but I mean, you know, it seems like when guys get out of high school, they go into some kind of, they go into a union, a, you know, trade union, or they go to college for, for maybe just something quick or get like a, a technical degree or some sorts, or, and then they get move on with their life. But I, 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 I see this being, you know, kind of, kind of means that for, for men, what would you, rec what would you recommend to men today? Just, I mean, you can't just uh, fall back on these uh, easy jobs, these cush jobs. Yeah, um, so the serv like uh, Franco McCoy said, the service industry was interesting in particular, um, this specific field, where it was bar restaurants, because they allowed, they allowed a lot of ex-cons and people with a criminal record to kind of gain a foothold in the labor economy. These people are being pushed out at a record pace. That, this is the number one affected field for the job market. Uh, hospitality, uh, food service, uh, bars and restaurants, stuff like that. These are what how people transition out of the prison system and now these people can't so they will go back into the black market the criminal market so you're just going to see a bigger spike in crime that's going to be one of the unintended consequences of this whole thing and uh you know crime is already spiking in major cities um, we're having a lot of shootings a lot of instability um unemployment the amount of people still unemployed is still rising no matter what the unemployment rates being uh, manipulated by Donald Trump and company, you know, it, there's more people receiving unemployment benefits than the unemployment rate. So it just, it's not logical anymore. Um, everything now in our system is trying to say that everything's fine when it's not, and they can play with numbers all day long. But when you go on main street, you know, it looks, it looks catastrophic to me. Yeah. No, it's pretty infuriating to see the stock market keep going up because obviously certain people are pumping uh, money in the stock market more and more just to make it look better. But uh, everyone on the on the streets, I'd say at least where I am, uh, people are still coping pretty hardcore. Like they're, it's going back to normal, guys. Everything's going back to normal. Everything's fine. The traffic's gone back to normal as far as what I've seen. Um, so that means everyone's back out and out and about again. Uh, but um, yeah, I don't know what my point was there. Um, hey, do you guys do you mind if we take a caller? He wants to comment on on this topic here. Do you mind, or do you want to go? Is that all right? Uh, is that ice cutter? No, go ahead. Yeah, ice cat. Yeah, bring him in. But yeah, Franco, I'm seeing the same thing around here. We're not too far away, but um, yeah, in yeah. the barrier, area, it is the same way. Um, the traffic is up, people are out, but at the same time, this resurgence is coming, and resurgence is uh, of this virus is supposedly even worse now. So we'll see, we'll see, people can't cope infinitely. That's, you know, there's going to be a breaking point for people. And sure. I think the end of July will be, because that's the end of these extended unemployment benefits. That's keeping a lot of people afloat. It's keeping a yeah. lot of people afloat because people are making more on that than they ever did working jobs. <laughs> yeah. All right, Ice Cat, uh, you there? Uh, yeah, I'm here, yeah. You said you wanted to say something about the uh, uh, a lot of businesses closing closing down and these uh, easy jobs that are going away. What do you what do you think? Well, it's the fourth of July actually here in the UK. The pubs and things they opened up again today, so I was pretty in it's pretty interesting. I had to walk around, see what was going on. 
So, what what you uh, so yeah, just like usual, man, it's pretty much a sausage fest. And I thought, <laughs> well, I'm not surprised because, okay, they open up the pubs again. Who cares? The women, the women aren't going to the pubs anymore anyway. So it was. Uh, so I saw like there's this rule here. You can go to the pubs, but you got to go in with a group, and you're not allowed. To, the group is like two to six, six maximum, and you've got to stay at a distance. And I was like, oh man, it's an excuse. They they now have a perfect excuse to like tell these random orbiting men that want to kind of approach a group of women. They now have a perfect ex excuse to tell them to fuck off. Yeah, to me, it seems like um, when places open up, it seems optimistic because there's this pent up demand. There's a lot of people that want to go out just to go out. They've never been to like a, a bar in a long time. But they want to go to one just to be in one. And that's what people get way too yeah. optimistic when they see like the first week of reopening. They see all these people coming back and they think that's going to remain steady. But it usually drops off pretty fast. when people Once people get their fill, they're like, oh, okay, that's what's going out is like. I see that for, for men, it's more, they have a more drive to go out and to cope by being at a bar. Because their lives online are terrible. Now, as a man, you get, you get no attention as, online. Like a woman, she gets over flooded with attention. A man basically gets put to the trash. Uh, you're just an excess male on online. So males need to cope in I IRL. For females, they can sit all day on TikTok and they'll just keep gaining millions of followers. They can yeah. make money off <laughs> off um, OnlyFans. They can check their Instagram. They can get their validation from Tinder if they're using that or just social media. So they can fully live online and live pretty freaking good. It's the males that are uh, they don't live yeah. so good online. I mean, I did see some women out there, but like I said before, so they've limited it to groups of six. I'd have a look at the groups and like it'd be like two women, four men. If if there's any any women at all, you know. Brutal. Yeah, when I do brutal. see, in my area, when I do see uh, a, lot, a lot of women, it seems to be like a group of only women, you know, hanging out. <laughs> no, guys, it's like a girls' night out, or a girls' night out, right? Um, I'd see, I sometimes see maybe two women together. I don't see the groups of women like I used to. I did used to see that in some places, but I, I, where I live is particularly bad, I would say. I know where First lives, it's particularly bad also. I've lived yeah, in other well, places. It's a little better where SBO is from from my experience. So, uh, but still, I mean, good good luck breaking into a group of six girls. It's it not. I'm not trying to be a defeatist here, but it's it's not easy. Yeah, when I was in college, um, you uh, you'd experience this gender segregation in bars. Um, there would be groups of girls that would come, like six, seven, eight, or nine girls, and they would literally dance in a circle, in a circle all facing each other. <laughs> so they're closed off from anybody. And it was such an interesting dynamic to see the club era before, I mean, Corona. Corona will just kill off the club era for sure. I'm already seeing that in my locality. Clubs are done. Uh, pizza places are done. Buffets are completely destroyed. So I'm seeing a lot of closures. But specifically, the bar scene was always gender, heavily gender segregated because a woman does not need to go to a bar to get a man. Um, women don't search for a man like that. They never need to. They have opportunities in their social circle all the time or their media social circle online, their their social media. So when they go out, they're going to go out at a girls' night out or they're going to go out with their boyfriends. Th the amount of single women was just, it was the smallest minority out of the clubs. The biggest was single males. Number two was uh, females just together with females. Number three was couples. And number four was single females. They barely existed. They're like 1% to 2% of the whole club. It was always a sausage fest too, to an extreme extent. But, yeah. yeah. Also, I noticed later on in the night, <laughs> the uh, the drunk the guy is the drunk guy kind of staggering all over the place. You know, probably had hopes of maybe meeting a woman when he went out. You know, it's like ah, oh, the bar's open again. You know, maybe I'll meet some woman, but. Uh, Half, half passed out. You know, totally drunk. 
just staggering home, you know. Yeah, that's I guess it's co- co- coping with alcohol. It's, it's pretty sad. Well, you know, I don't. I don't even think even. I don't even, as a guy. I don't want to meet a girl at a bar. If you if you're going for like uh, something long term, I don't think it's good for other men or women to try to be finding someone at a bar. It's not good. It's like that song by Morrissey. I don't know if you guys heard that song. How soon is now? It's a classic. No, you guys heard that? It was a famous yeah, song. It was on um, I can't remember songs on TV. Charmed. It was a Charmed TV theme. And the lyrics are like, you go, you go to the bar and you stand on your own, and then you leave on your own, and then you cry. <laughs> Something that's cool. really funny. I, I, I just get the point is, is that even even if you do have a successful relationship with that girl for a while, you, she's not she's not going to stop going to the bar just because you're in a relationship. She's going to still want to go on the girls' nights out. She's going to still yeah. want to go to bars without you. It, it's it's gonna it's gonna so it's not really going to be monogamous though, is it? Yeah, well, I, I kind of went in the daytime, I went in the day and the nights, and in the daytime, like, they're all in the, you know, the beer garden, and they it looked like there were kind of a lot of friends, old friends, like, nice social circles. But oh, yeah, that, that's circles, probably okay, yeah, that's probably okay, I, I just, I met one of the, uh, you know, yeah. bars or, or clubs where it's like a, like a hookup, right. yeah, that's different, but if you're going to somewhere and listening to some music, that might be different. But those, those social circles, you know, these guys... Like I said, groups of six, maybe they all knew each other, like some other groups knew some other group. But uh, it was heavily four four guys to every two girls. And now, if you were some outsider trying to go go, go in there like, hey, guys, I live just over there, you know, it's like, no, they'll tell you to fuck off straight away. Now they have the perfect excuse. It's like, bro, social distancing, bro. Sorry, get yeah. back, you know. Guys, I live just over there. Oh, yeah. no, Someone's no. echoing. But yeah, it's me. Uh, I can't, how old are you? I forgot. I'm th- mid thirties, kind of mid late thirties. Uh, just gone past mid thirties, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. So the bar scene probably changed throughout your, throughout everything you've seen throughout life. Um, yeah, the bar scene. I what you talked about is guys holding out hope. I see that during coronavirus is that males got more desperate and the females got even more. They got more disgusted of men. There was an article called uh, "Single Guys Are Really Going for It," and this was like a, mu- a couple weeks into Corona. Basically, guys were so desperate they were hitting up all their exes. And there was a there was a subreddit I was reading called "R slash Dating Over Dating Over Thirty for everybody that's single over that age." And the women were all complaining that guys were reaching out to them that they they haven't talked to in six years. Like one complained about, I haven't I haven't talked to this guy in six years. We went on one date and he's reaching out to me. And they were getting spammed by their exes, by any guy they ever even knew. So every guy basically, every blue pill guy just went on a rampage on a shotgun spree because they were so. And there was guys admitting this, and they thought they thought there was nothing wrong with it. That's the strange thing, guys. I think it's nothing wrong with just consistently hitting up females like a shotgun approach. That they haven't seen or talked to for years, it it's it's legitimately the the delusion is unreal of some guys. Yeah, I don't know, man, mm-hmm. these are the kind of guys that run into trouble. They those guys will get arrested these days, man. If they keep doing that stuff, it's, it's not allowed <laughs> anymore. It's really well, me- messaging friends from six years ago is not. Well, if they keep if they keep I don't know if they get, if they keep like harassing them. What I keep. I don't think he. I don't think first means they're harassed. He's just saying, "Hey, what's going on? I haven't heard from you in a while." That's that's not. I mean, it, it's kind of. It, it's not so. It's that. not really socially correct, but it's uh, it's not anything illegal or anything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah. they do. Well, they'll get blocked, I guess. But you, you mean like guys that do like like spam approaches constantly. Well, they, don't they can't spam, do it. They don't spam a specific female. They it's a shotgun approach. So, you're shooting a lot of pellets out. You're trying to like you're yeah. hitting one text per female that in your in that you ever known. It's a cheap, energy and efficient yeah, I've way. Heard, I've heard guys. If you mean doing that online, I've heard guys getting their accounts deleted now. If they're doing that on Facebook, wow, even online really? they come down on it. Okay. I've heard. Yeah, I've, I've heard. Okay, wow, that just, uh, that is interesting. I think I'm, I think so I'm many not, guys are doing this shit. So many guys are doing this crap that um, Facebook's getting tired of it, and um, they don't, they want to appease their female fan base because that's that's who brings yeah, well, in the money. 
It's the female well, what, viewer. What's going on, I guess, is, is the females are complaining and Facebook is saying, getting all the complaints from all these new females that complain about anything now. And they're saying, okay, well, we'll do something about it. Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll, warn, him, we'll warn him, then we'll ban him. Yeah. I'm supportive of it, honestly, because um, this 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 action, it's not a lot. It's not mm. every guy that does this. It's actually it's less than the majority, I think. But the guys who do it, they ruin it for everybody. They make they make it seem that all males are just thirsty creeps. So it's it it, it just takes yeah. a few guys doing PUA, doing cold approach, yeah. doing this type of crap to 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 make the whole male gender look like, you know, just look awful. And uh, yeah. it, I, I, you know, I always said that uh, cold approaching and that just should be illegal because it's not useful. It, it lo it's cringe. It's awful for the male. Uh, the females don't want it. That's the last thing. when females go out. That's the last thing they want to do. They spent their whole day getting approached online. They wake up. They check their phone. And by the time there'll be five to ten guys adding them, DMing them. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So when they go out to bars. When they go out to the public sphere, they want nothing to do with men. Men have oversaturated themselves. When you oversaturate someone yeah. with attention, they pull back. They become a narcissist. They start to value you less. And that's what men have done. You know, men with these online platforms, mm -hmm. they basically made themselves irrelevant. Yeah, how it's, insane, it's not... How insane would you have to be to still be into that PUA shit in 2020, man? You'd have to be some really old school, living under a rock for 10 years, insane man to still, to still think, think well, that way. Well, the uh, PUAs, they, they still think that they're getting a good deal. Some of these guys who come on here say, I, I approached 400 women and I got one date with a 400 pound woman and I feel yeah. like I got a good deal. I got a great. I'm not. I'm not pointing any names. I like the guy who said that. There's, this was a real quote from someone, and I'm, I like the guy. I hope he no, returns. No, no, no. You guys know what I'm talking about, but I hope he returns. But, uh, but you know, he thinks he got a good deal, and, and he's and he's telling way, people. It's kind of awesome, man. Because it's like, what would some guy that just still believes in that, and he got something out of it at least? I mean. He goes to me. Yeah, I mean, it, it, to, to me, to to Espio, uh, I don't know, maybe you guys. I, I say, hey, that's not that doesn't sound like a good deal. I'd rather put my time into uh, learning a new skill, learn, uh, making more money. I'd rather put my time into that. I don't want to be putting my time into to asking out four hundred women, <laughs> and then my and then and then my my reward is a is a three hundred pound woman. No, I mean, no, that's not a good deal for me. That's not a good deal. <laughs> yeah, I'm on Team Espio on that one. But, oh, man, 10 years ago, man, PUA was huge. Every guy was doing PUA on the weekend. It's like, oh, P PUA time, guys. P it's, uh, it, let's go out sergeing. It's, uh, it's game night. It's game night, bros. Let's, let's hit, the, yeah, hit the bars. They it's had reality shows about it. Remember that reality changed. show on, like, VH1? Uh, what was the guy's name? Uh, Mystery. You remember this guy? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mystery, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. There, there's a whole, and then of course, guys who compete to see who with the best. They they went from like zero to hero kind of thing, and uh, it, I remember watching. It was pretty hard to watch, even though like obviously it was edited heavily. It was still hard to watch these guys. Like they sent them into like a strip club. Like, okay, bro, you're gonna pick up a stripper now, and of course, none of them actually did it. But you know, it's yeah. bad. These uh, PUA cons were uh, horrendous to watch. I think Mystery did one where. He had a house like a like a where you, like he got like thirty to fifty guys to go to this one house he rented somewhere in the major city, and it was their practice like boot camp. But it was supposed to have a lot of females there, but they had only like two females that were like legit like hired hookers. It's crazy <coughs> to me. Um, the PU industry has gone down after being exposed um, for what it is. But there's a lot of men who are uh, psychopathic, delusional, and mentally ill, especially in America. America, the reason why America seems so unstable, seems so on an edge, uh, seems so divided, seems so polarized, is because when Ronald Reagan was president, he deinstitutionalized mental illness. Before Ronald Reagan, there was institutions for the mentally ill, and now we no longer have that. So America is running around with a lot of mentally ill people on the streets. And these are the people who get attention on, on YouTube, on Twitter, on everything. So... And these are the guys that are going to be doing PUA because they don't under, they're not going to understand uh, some social basic social fundamentals and when they need to stop certain things. Some guys cannot, you know, when you tell them no, they think that they just need to try harder. And those men, 
you know, they ruin it for every guy. Uh, because... they'll, they'll end up in prison, those guys, if, if that's, if that's what you <laughs> Yeah, they try to they try to short circuit their natural drive of shame and realize it. And they say, oh, they have these sayings like, oh, yeah, feeling self shame is beta, bro, and all this stuff. But no, no, feeling shame is, is a natural thing that tell you it's, it's, this is not socially acceptable. You're supposed to wait for some kind of cue to to approach someone you know so you don't just you don't just come in their face and say hey what are you doing what are you doing no no, no. we have this kind of what natural what that's what a porn star would do come in their face that's like the porn star approach <laughs> yeah Sorry, yeah but they they spend all this time and they they spend hundreds of dollars uh learning from people to try to short circuit this natural thing we have to to behave that's socially acceptable and i i don't think it's i don't think it's i think you're supposed to wait for some kind of cue to you know come hither before you just go, go approach 300 women you know uh, that's exactly how it works um people men, you know most men don't believe this because they're they don't know uh it happens to not a lot of men but especially nowadays, it's the female that's supposed to put herself into your orbit. No, she's not going to hey, be... Hey, you know what I observed, actually? So, like I said, the groups, they're all sitting in outside. And, yeah, the two two women to the four... Like, the women, I so some of them are pretty good-looking, but they're, they're quite masculine. So I was thinking maybe, you know what, these... A lot of women wouldn't even, like, don't even go to, like, bars or pubs or... Um, you know, drinking like taverns or whatever anymore. They just stay at home or they go out with their girlfriend. They go to maybe like the park or something. I don't know. But uh, these women look kind of masculine. I was even thinking though, some chatty guys, they look like happy. Some like guys on the outskirts orbiting. I was thinking maybe these, the women are masculine today. Maybe even like these women are like sharing their men, you know, like maybe a, a, some guys fucking her like on the first half of the week and some other guys having her the rest of the week or something man because i was just they, they all looked like they were having a good time but the women that would hang out there i think they would be quite masculine today they'd it's something is bad is going on and but it is what it is i guess yeah well, it's just what I, I i thought about as i was walking past you know i was kind of like a, a doing an obs observation kind of a thing yeah you can tell that things are not equally divided anymore and there's no real monogamy it's really the end of monogamy especially now corona is just gonna like albert pack he said that corona has sped things up in the acceleration by 10 years um yeah the trends the social trends have just been they've been moved forward we're living in 2030 dystopian social trends because we knew things were going down but after corona things have to really speed up uh the, the acceleration is insane uh especially in america we're we don't even have coins anymore. We have a coin shortage. So there's 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 so many crazy things cool. every day that are continuously happening. And uh, so monogamy, we used to have a system of back 8,000 years ago when agriculture started, the reproduction rate for every man was 17 women. 17 women reproduced for every man. And what, what counterbalanced this, what made it one-to-one, -one, or at least balanced, more balanced to one of the one-to-one, -one, was monogamy enforced by the, you know, the Christian cool. kind of state authority. And, and oh I, man, some some of those women looked so fucking happy though. They, they were like laughing, big smile, big grin on the face. You know, a lot of the chads they looked happy as well. Even though, well, I guess they're still getting what they want. You know, but uh, a lot of men are not happy today, as we all know. Uh, first, can you you were on a good topic there with that. What were you saying about uh, some of uh, women putting themselves in your sphere? What were, uh, what were you saying before? Well, that's what guys don't realize, and I think Franco can confirm this um, because. Uh, Men believe that they are supposed to be the ones to approach, to cold approach, and that ne that is not necessarily true. It is really the female who chooses if you get to approach. They're the ones who decide what your interaction will be. It's Buford's law, or I'm, I'm not prob probably not saying that right, but uh, if, fault, if, yeah, yeah, if a female cannot fault. derive any benefit from an interaction, the male, no such interaction will happen. So, Correct. So. It's, it's the female that puts herself into the male's orbit. Um, she's not going to come up to you and say, okay, let's bang. Or, you know, it's going to be a hint. But it's going to be very obvious. The cue is going to be pretty freaking obvious. Even an autistic guy, yeah. autism is no excuse because they make it dead obvious, you know. So this is how really it happens. Guys wonder, how does it happen? Why is it not happening to me? Because they're not supposed to make it happen. It didn't work like that. It's just so rare now because less and less guys are being chosen. But this is how it's supposed to work. 
There's nothing really wrong with you, um, except that the sexual market has gotten way out of hand, and that some you- guy here, some some guy said the uh, the guy from Texas got himself a girlfriend now. Hey, good for him, man. How do you him. good for him? Yeah, he, he, he was sure. good looking though. That guy, that guy was really good looking, well, right? Um, first, I don't know if you did you see that uh, that video from the, that um, British uh, television show or no, I think it was a used uh, TV uh, like a news station or something. They did a, this experiment and they put they looked at a party and they had hidden cameras all around the party and they watched people as they flirted with each other and they noticed. Did you guys see that? Yeah, dating in the dark. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they noticed that they uh. tried to they they noticed that that. Uh, the 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 men who tried to put themselves in women's spirit, they had almost zero success. Yep. The the men the the, the only men uh, it, it only it only brought on um, unwanted um, uh, just shame and it, you you see these guys trying to put themselves in women's circle and they're just kind of awkwardly like trying to get involved, holding their drink and trying to get in the conversation and you know the only guys who were successful were the ones who waited for a cue to come in and they were brought in the into the circle. Yep, uh, but for a lot of men, that cue will never come in because women are very particular in what they like, and uh, male males have a male. Well, if you look at the male, they're attracted to anything: big woman, uh, skinny woman, you know, short woman, tall woman. There's there's always a market for that. But females are very particular in the type of guy they like, and that's going to be less less and less of the population as time goes on. Um, more and more men are going to get left out of this, and yeah, guys can't wait for social cues. Uh, and I see why because it doesn't happen to them. It happens very rarely. It happened for most men in high school, but they missed out on the opportunity because they were, you know, study maxing or, you know, they they weren't in the air. They, they weren't ready to date, really. They didn't have a car. They, you got to get more a, ass. You got to get more ass. Yeah, you got to get, exactly. get like 100, 100 notch count, bro. <laughs> yeah, I mean. That's what that's what fucks with a lot of guys' heads is, okay, you got this, this thing in high school works great, but. Oh, but oh no, dude! Your notch count is below fifty, bro. You got you, you got to go to college and you got to fuck more women. No, you don't. Trust me. Yeah, um, but uh, what you were talking it. about earlier, what you were talking about earlier with the um, women inserting themselves in your in your sphere, I think I know what you're referring to. My, I mean, I'd say about the last girl that I dated seriously, that's what happened. I mean, she was not really on my radar. Not that she wasn't attractive; it's just I wasn't I wasn't paying attention, and she. She purposely inserted herself into my sphere by asking a coworker if I quote unquote liked her. It was it was purely high school shit, of course, but that was her way of inserting herself into my sphere, and the, the rest is history. But that's that's what women do if they if they truly are into you, you'll know. That's you're gonna know it. You're yeah, gonna you're not gonna be them. you're not gonna be begging them. Uh, uh, oh, and then uh, like let's do something on Saturday, and then she cancels. And uh, oh, how about how about next Saturday? Yeah. No, 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 no. That's not gonna happen. If, if they really like you. Yeah, and I can exactly. confirm this story exactly. from Franco because I I I personally know this person. So um, yeah, and that's how it happens. It's very obvious. They do find proxies like that. They will. They, see, females aren't. In, they're not direct. They're not direct like males. They're just not their nature. Um. The way they speak is not also direct. Um, they speak womanese, and uh, this is a very indirect because they want to have plausible deniability. They don't want to get ever rejected, so they will ask a coworker. They will do it stealthily like that, but you will know. That's the thing, and a lot of this happens through social media. There was a guy who was showing me um, his DMs um, on our Discord server. So this is how it really happens. It's the female reaching out. And the reason why guys are so confused is because it doesn't happen for most guys. It just doesn't. And they think they, they the, what they project is that they need to go do it. And that is really, that's that's really legit toxic. I mean, because these men are just going to have a terrible experience. The women are going to have a terrible experience. And they're getting really diluted advice. Uh, the, this, this advice that it's like, it's like the last stand advice. It, it, it's like a boomer dad doesn't know what to tell his son. So he says, oh, we'll go approach him at the mall because he has no clue. This boomer got approached. <laughs> he, 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 his wife put herself in his social circle at a school dance in like 1968. So that's how that happened. So he has no practical advice to give you. These MGTOWs, these red pillars that are older than dirt, that are, that are fossils, you know, 50, 60 year old guys <laughs> like, um, like Rolo Tomasi, you know, these guys are living in a different world. Um, They lived in a different sexual market, Uh, one where you didn't have to compete against social media, against her dog, 
against her DMs, against her OnlyFans, you know? Now you're in such high competition with a girl. Yeah. I mean, and, and I was I was saying this uh, the other night was the dog pill res- really isn't. I mean, there's I'm sure there's some that fuck dogs, but it's it's a minority. But it's not about her fucking the dog. It's about her giving so much attention to the dog that she has no time for you or someone that that she's not interested in. And and so that that time is even if you're let's say you're Brad or Chad, that dog takes up way more time than you than you think. I mean. Those things, it's it's uh it's like their baby. It's of course it's it's oh it's it's, fur it's, baby. You'll see this on, yeah the fur baby the, thing. The, you'll see this the on, value on of a human dog. male today, it's practically zero. It's I'd less say. than a yeah. dog. It's less than a dog for sure. It's yeah. less than a dog for sure. Less than a pet. You're completely right. Absolutely. I mean, right. um, I'm the dog pill section was made by you sending me stuff in, so it's it's so obvious. <laughs> yeah. It's so obvious that when you go online dating as a male, which you shouldn't unless you've got previous success from it. And most guys don't have that. Um, when you go on there, half the girls, or more than half, will have their dog in the picture being very, very yeah. um, intimate. In fact, mm-hmm. girls take more intimate picture, pictures actually. with their dogs than they do with their boyfriends for the most part. Their boyfriends will be, it'll be very, um, it'll be very neutral. Um, it won't be too intimate. But their dogs, they're all over their dogs in, in the bed, yeah. um, holding them they're really like close. The dogs and everything. I like mouth kissing the dogs. Yep. I didn't want to believe the dog pill, but <laughs> like pictures of them mouth kissing their dogs. Like, ugh. Yep. No, Shit is dog, clown dog world. Is clown world. Uh, it's, it, it serves society. It serves this new society because there is no incentive for the elite to solve this issue. They, we no longer need families. We literally don't. We need The population needs to fall due to automation. Most people derive their income from working for a paycheck. They work hours and they get paid for those hours. That system is going away. It's slowly being, uh, you don't believe me? Look at the labor force participation rate. Look at the percentage uh, labor has in the economy. The percent um, of the GDP that is held by labor. It's been steadily falling because more is getting automated, offshored, you know, outsourced or split between a lot of people. So work is not going to be a part of, that's how what, that's what they're turning people into. They're t- turning people into gig workers. And when you have an oversaturation yeah. of labor, that is causes instability. So you don't need people having more kids. This works perfectly for the future. You know, the future does not need more families. This is why this insult crisis will never get addressed by the top. This is this is they need to accelerate the insult crisis. They need less babies being born. You know. I don't know what's going to happen with the incels. Uh... Well, I know. I have an idea. Um, I can tell you this. Most males um, that were born maybe 1990 and um, and after, I think for the majority of those males, they will not get married. They will not have kids of their own. And most of them will not even have a long-term stable relationship. That is really the future. We're already seeing this in the UK. True Hearts, AK 54 he talked in the UK that 40% of men are now childless in the UK. For women, it's not like that at all. You know, it's maybe it's it's a single digit percent in the black community in America, which first suffered under feminism, which first suffered under the welfare state. They, they like 40 percent of men there don't reproduce, have their kid. It's usually a Tyrone having multiple kids, with multiple women. And that's why I have a single mom crisis. This is starting to appear in the white community for a while now. So in this system, most men will not the the end, the genetic line that men carried from all their ancestors, from all that effort, is ending, ending this generation. This is the conclusion of the insult crisis. But what is this? Is the economy going to collapse? Because these guys aren't going to be motivated to do anything. That, I, mean, uh, I mean, I don't have enough... Are they going to get sex workers to, to provide for them? Or... Yeah. It's Hold on, I'm going to interrupt here because... I don't know why this this idea comes in here into these chats that okay because I can't I'm not married uh, so I'm just gonna screw every other aspect of my life and not work hard and not own anything yeah. and you know I, I don't know where this comes from. But they're gonna not everyone's gonna they're not gonna do they might get some little job somewhere but they're gonna get depressed one night and they're gonna do something stupid or. 
It's going to create a lot. Yeah, of but I mean, why play. would you? Why would you want to? Even if you're not, don't have that aspect of marriage. You know, why would you want to screw over the rest of your life? I mean, do you want to be in a point where you, you your car breaks down and you don't have a thousand dollars for a new transmission, and then you can't get to work, so you get fired? And I mean, now now your whole life screwed up. You know, at least even if you're not married, at least you could be successful. You know. Maybe you're right because. They're bringing in all these guys anyway. Like they've got enough menial labour. They put put the incels on um, uh, benefits and crisis averted. You know, the incels. Would have stayed it, I don't know if you agree with it, but what is what does it come from? Like, is it just like, uh, you know, I, I I don't like my social life, so I'm going to yeah. sabotage the rest well, of my life. Where, no, is no, that the, is that the mindset? Yeah, they've got they've got nothing to lose. These guys. So yeah. I guess why not? It comes from demoralization too. Uh, for at least for a lot of men that they confirm this, that one of the things that push you to be better um, is having a stable relationship. Having that steady validation really pushes you to. Be, it, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's life fuel. It's life fuel. Having that female validation every day, in your phone, um, going on dates, seeing people, uh, being accepted by society. You know, um, you're, you're yeah. everyone around you. I think treats you better when you are in a couple. So. so. Hey guys, we got a super. We got a super. Uh, what do they call it? A, a donation yeah. ch chat. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Okay, I'll, I'll, read, the, I'll, I'll read the super chat from uh, Hoki Bukisa. I'm, I'm butchering that. But what older men don't have experience with is how unnatural the sex market is. Back in their day, birth control had only started transforming society. Today, promiscuity is presumed and normalized. Yeah, that is a high IQ observation. Uh, thank you for that. That is true. Um, these men, that's why I say these older men that give advice to the young generation, they don't realize that the, the, the younger generation men are competing in a totally, completely alien market that they competed. They, these people have yeah. no access to online. Maybe they did, but the online of the past reflects nothing of the current online. The online maybe they participated in was old 1990s computers, Usenet forms, you know. Um, basic stuff like that. It wasn't, Not TikTok dick appointments. Yeah, it wasn't they, they TikTok dick appointments, dick appointments. What we see now. <laughs> so these and what what's what's the most awful is that these are the men that give advice. Red coach Red Pill gives some of the most toxic, worthless, harmful advice. This is why he need these people need to be stopped legitimately because he tells men to not pursue women in his in their twenties. Your twenties are the best, you know. Even even before that, but your twenties are some of the best time to do that. Once you're when when you're in college, when you're in these artificial environments, when there's warm women than men, when the, you have when it's uh, it is culturally acceptable to approach in those scenarios. You you have social circles. Once you're out of those environments and into the real world, it gets very harsh. There's not a lot of venues for guys to go to meet women. There there's none at all. It's gonna all happen in your high school and grade school. But people like Coach Redpill, they tell people, oh, in your twenties, just work hard and no focus on woman and when you're 35 to 40 that's when it comes he, sa he says that male peaks at 44 and his model really says uh. that a 22 year old guy has the same values an 82 year old man like these models that they bring have no legitimacy and they they are they're not only bad and wrong they they lead men to not succeed in the dating market at all men should should yeah. work on their dating skills right when they're eight, one right when they're hit puberty they should be going all out. At the same time, they're doing their coursework. They're doing their schoolwork. It should be a dual effort. It should be a dual strategy. Mm -hmm. You know? That guy said this. He must be intentionally giving bad advice. I've noticed a lot of... Some, some people do that. It's not nice. He's probably... Well, hey, uh, uh, Ice Cat, thanks, thanks so much for calling in. We appreciate you. I hope we can call in the next one or, or on the next topic. When we start the next topic, hopefully you can call in again, okay? Thank you, Ice Cat. Okay, it's thanks, always guys. good hearing from you. Check out yeah. Ice Cat's channel. Yeah. He has a lot of good interviews. Ice Cat Seven. Ice Cat Seven. Ice Cat Seven. I've been, yeah. I'm gonna post his channel in the live stream. Is it? He has an interview with you on there too. Yep. Doesn't he? There's an interview uh, with me, and there's an inter interview with um, Matt, or not Matt, but um, Williams well, with Vlog. That um, he talks about how the community has been infiltrated by Feds and Glow people. So. You know, it's very interesting. Ice Cat Seven, check that channel out. It's a great channel. I like it a lot. Hell yeah! I'm yeah. Link it in the YouTube. Um, thanks. No problem. Thank you. Thanks, Ice Cat. 
Speaking of Matt. Speaking of Matt. Oh, shit. We did have a Matt conversation to, yesterday. Matt, Matt says he was working on his Miata. He wanted to call in for a little bit. Everyone should be Miata maxing to cope. That's right. But um, I, I don't know if you want to bring up the next topic with Matt or do you want to get Matt's opinion on uh, 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 the uh, topic on the businesses closing down, the restaurant industry. Matt, do you have any thoughts on like what, what's a guy to do today without, uh, without any bars open, without any uh, – <laughs> Without any bars or clubs to go to, Matt. Oh God, fuck, dude. Does anyone even know at this point? What does the guy to do? Like, besides go to bars and clubs? Is that what you're asking? Just what do you think about all the uh, like? Uh, how is the economy going to change? How are men going to adapt to the, this new economy, this new social setting with no, with no, no, no bars and no one going to bars anymore? They're all closing down. Like, what do you see happening in the future in this uh, 2021? Dude, that's a fucking, that's a tough question, dude. Because it's like, there's so many variables to that. It's like, what, nothing replaces, like, there's no more social settings like that. Are you saying, are you like, you think that we're not going to have any gatherings, like that's over forever? Or, like, you think bars and clubs are just done for good? Or are you just assuming? Well, you we were talking about how uh, just with this COVID thing, they're not keeping up with the with, with their um, profits to, to for their rents. So it's it might yeah, be a thing of the I past. Mean, a club near me failed to pay the property taxes. They can't even pay the property taxes, let alone their mortgage. So that's getting really bad. These places, once they're done, they you can't recover. You you go into bankruptcy. You you will not be able to buy into the market because these people bought low. These property prices have skyrocketed in these major cities. And plus, you got riots burning Dude. places down. You got Corona shutting these places down. I don't think these these like forty one percent of Yelp, on Yelp, there's a they have a, a local economy business index that that measures the health of a local economy. And they said forty one percent of businesses are per permanently closed on Yelp. Look this up. You know, uh, it's utterly. I think. Um. um God, what's a guy gonna do? I think. What what you are you saying? What are you asking? Well, Matt, what, you're okay. Guy? You got skills. Like you built your own shed. You you, you do yeah, electrical. You, you work right on your now. own car. So you'll be good. You offer a skill. But but what about all these people who you know um you know they they work as a bartender because they make two hundred dollars a night in tips and they never they never get any skills. Dude, they're fucking useless. Then, like, what do you? What's the even point of them keeping them around? Like, you know what I mean? Like, you're you're dead weight. You know, well, that's if what all you can do is serve that's a fucking they, beer and like mix a beer, you're dead. Or mix a drink, you're dead weight. Yeah. Fuck well, I mean, no, they're, they're not. They're not. They're not dead meat because uh, you, you're just your taxes are going to support them. Yeah. They're going to go on the dole. Of course. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're headed to socialism, communism. Dude. That's yeah. the, this is happening. Like we talk about this. We already have socialism for the rich gap. in this country. We have socialism for yeah. the because Franco McCoy talked about the frustration that people have seeing the mainstream economy fall, but the stocks go up. People need to remember that the stocks, 84% of stocks are owned, 84% are owned by the top 10%. That 40% of that, you know, 40% of that 84%, um, so 40% 40 left over, 40% of that is by the top 1%. The stock market is not for regular people. It's for the rich people to park their money to beat inflation. And the Federal Reserve completely pumps this market all the time. You take the Federal Reserve balance sheet and overlay it with the S&P 500, and it matches like almost one to one. So this this model of the stock market, it does not tell you the health of the economy. It's completely disconnected. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, it's fucking. It's, yeah, it's just, it's just a way for the yeah, rich people to beat inflation. You know, it's yeah, it's not for poor. It's not for middle class and poor people. Dude, we're rock out. We're so fucked, man. Jesus Christ, this fucking world is. Fucking, this shit is just fucking decaying all around. It's decaying us. extremely Every fast, avenue. too. Um, I can't even track, like, like you said, it's hard to predict. I don't know if I wake up tomorrow, what's going to be next? Recently, we have a coin shortage from the Federal Reserve. Like, if you go to a fast food restaurant or any restaurant, you have to give exact change because there's not even enough coins. You know, we're going to like a cashless <laughs> oh, yeah, society. No, yeah. <laughs> so, um, you need to start squatting. I'm, I'm an advocate of squatting. Yeah, find, squatters' find rights. Find a local floor and own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got, we got, we talk apartment. We, yeah, everyone here needs to start fucking squatting. You, you look up, look into it. Your state, you have a lot of more rights with squatting than you realize. Like, there's gonna be a lot of property that people aren't gonna be able to fucking pay rent on. They're not gonna, they're not gonna, you know, all these rich people have these fucking three houses. 
They're just going to be staying vacant. Get your gun. Look in this squatting. You know what I mean? Try to find whatever. You know, like just do what you got to do to get by. Like that's that's where this is headed. You know, this is we're you know what's interesting mode. during the riots in Manhattan. During the riots in Manhattan, they said that all the rich people that lived in these avenues that you know the you know the the famous ones, um, Tribeca and stuff like that. The one. Um, these penthouses up in the Manhattan area, they said most of them cleared out during the riots. These people dipped because they have multiple properties. They <laughs> they can go to Marfa's Vineyard. They can go to uh, Stamford, Connecticut. They can they can go all these places where the bankers hide at when they're not in Manhattan. So, you know, the, the these the property in this country, uh, especially as a regular guy, you are so locked out of that. It is completely unattainable because. Your wages are going down. Your opportunity to make money in this society is going down. But the property prices around you keep going up. There's keep there's less and less property on the market. So every yep. year it gets worse for the average guy. And th this oh, expectation, yeah. the expectation for a guy is to have his own place. A woman, she's fine living with her family, even though we have equality, right? But the expectation are all in the mail. You better have your own condo. You better have your own car. You better have your six-figure job. The standards never cease to decrease, even though the economy is decreasing for the average male. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that isn't that more a white thing though? Because I I've known uh, immigrants, yeah, uh, white, Asian yeah. and, and Hispanic immigrants, they that they're happy having a so they have a twenty year old uh, uh, son and daughter in law or vice versa. They're happy to have them move into a bedroom. Right. In their, but the, their bedroom house. most rich middle class white people have kids because they're just accessories they don't really love their kids most let's be honest oh well, you know I, I guess you could say that about a lot of yeah people they put them in a race. daycare they both they, they're really jobs. just accessories they, yeah, yeah. yeah so Bill, get the like why would you want your accessories so, you know like 18 get the fuck out of my house you're costing me money you're not cute anymore you're just an, you're just an annoying young adult like get the fuck out of here you know what i mean that's how most people think of their kids that they, they don't they just had them you know fucking whatever they had them biology whatever you, you could list here all the other reasons they had them but mainly had them just because whatever like you know they were they were addicted to that fucking oxytocin dopamine rush of their little baby and their little kid and then it grows up and it's like nah whatever like fuck this you know like like anything else people get pets when they go and get tough like fuck that dog fuck that cat that's how people are when, when, they, when they need to take responsibility for shit like they're nowhere to be found it's just you know what i mean but, yeah. oh, guys, when the fucking bars close down in restaurants, I just thought about it. Uh, hopefully, this country gets its shit together and prostitution becomes illegal. Yep. Or, <laughs> or just, and again, the police are gone, so it doesn't even matter. You can go out and fuck hookers. So, why do people go to bars and clubs anyway? Like, any yep. guy here is honest with themselves. They're not going to talk to a bunch of random drunk guys. Nope. They're not there for that. Yeah, you could have, I've had good conversations with guys at bars and shit. Don't get me wrong. It's You know what I mean? But... You're going there to get late, so start fucking hooker maxing. That's what guys. Should, that's what guys should be doing. Um, that's what just, I'm doing. Just, just put that money towards getting laid. Like you're not there to, you know what I mean? You want to socialize? You go socialize. You know what? You go places you want to go to. You like video games? You go. You know, I think I think probably what will probably happen is more more and more online communities will start meeting up. I think it'll become a lot more popular to like actually like. Oh, we have nowhere to go anymore. I think there's a good chance that. People are going to start meeting up, like meetup.com. There's going to be maybe new websites, like maybe new apps coming out. Who the fuck knows? Like, oh, we have to get out and socialize more and, like, do this shit, like, on our own. Like, so I think people, like, they're not going to have that default, like, I'll just go to the bar. I'll just go to the bar and hang out and get my, like, socializing fix. So I don't know. We'll see. I think that's going to happen. And then, yeah. Do I think a lot of people well, are going to become, like, to... fucking suicidal that's... as fuck after this? Good... You know what I mean? Uh... That's a good way to close the topic. We've been talking about it for over an hour. I was when you first. You want to uh, while we have while we're blessed with Matt's presence. Do you want to go into the next topic laid, a little bit? Cyber, hold up, hold up. Cyber Six says it's not about getting late. Are you fucking delusional, dude? Ninety-nine point well, nine percent of guys go to a bar to get laid. A lot of these guys want girlfriends. You're deluding like yourself. Of, what? That's a lot of these guys want girlfriends. They don't or. Yeah, but it's the same thing because you're not going to a bar for a girlfriend. What the fuck are these people smoking? <laughs> the fuck, you know what I mean, dude? Like, what the Lots fuck? Yeah, it Social happens, but like, yeah. you may find your girlfriend at a bar. It happens. I get that, but you, you know, you're not going out on the hunt at the bar and talking to drunk girls at two in the morning because you want a girlfriend in that moment. You know what I mean? It's not really the most conducive environment to like 
really get to know a girl who's fucking wasted and it's just like yeah you know, it's not like, it's, it's traditionally bar, advised alcohol. not to do that it's actually. not yeah, yeah, you do that shit it's kind of sober. a red flag from the beginning if you, if if she's at a bar and you know it's just it's kind of it's possible but uh, it's it's kind of you're starting with a few red flags there. There's not there's not much difference between a bar and swiping on Tinder because they're both pretty yeah. random people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, pr I I would pr I would tell a guy to go a bar versus Tinder because Tinder is just uh, going to be a wasteland. Yeah, you better chance you're better chance on at a bar. Any yeah. guy listening, uh, you oh, wait, you actually have a chance in hell at a bar. Um, especially with drunk the girls. Girl, they're, yeah, they're drunk. Their standards get really fucking Very low. low. Like you, you Very low. anyone who has drank. Yeah, everyone like guys. Everyone we know fucking your standards drop. Like you'll fuck a you'll probably most people will fuck a fat girl in here. Are yeah, disgusting and drunk man girls girl. tend to approach. Drunk, like they, trunk, they tend to yep. approach too. Um, I don't think it's a viable solution anymore for most men. Um, the bars are inherently pretty toxic for it to as a go as a single guy. You better go to the group. You should never be alone in a bar as a single man. You will be looked at suspicion. Um, other guys, groups of guys, you know, you know, a lot of a lot of frustrated male males end up at bars, and that's why bar fights happen because it's the, it's the males going there as a delusion that they can meet. A woman and most of these guys don't especially nowadays um as ice cap pointed out it's a sausage fest it's mostly men going out because women don't even need to go out to get their social fix anymore their social fix comes to them while they're sleeping they turn on that phone they're already filled up for the day that's their their social validation gas tank is filled up for the day so they don't even need to go to these venues the venues are going to destroy mostly men yeah more or less, yeah. I mean, I think some girls, I don't know, man. Some girls do like going out and just, like, dancing. And, you know, a lot of girls do. I don't know. It's it's tough to say. I mean, Oh, yeah, definitely. There are some girls that love. Like, they, they um, do soak up the real-life attention. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Yeah, they soak up the they're, venue. They, 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 yeah, but they're not they, even They love going women, there and having guys check personally. them out and approach them in person. Like, they definitely are going to miss that. There's no, like, I don't know. It probably won't affect them as bad as men, but, like, I don't know, man. Like, just from what I've seen going out. Yeah, I agree with you. Girls definitely soak that shit up. Like, you just, you know, walking around, like, yeah, dude, they, they soak that shit up. Like, I mean, there's nothing that replaces real topic. life, real life fucking actual human interaction. It's just there, this, this, this whole technology, what we're doing now is, is like, is like, is like, you know what I mean? Taking a vitamin when you need to eat actual meal. It's, it's like, it's just a little supplement. It doesn't give you everything you need in terms of socializing. So, yeah, socializing still autistic, needs to happen on a, on a personal, in-person basis. Develop, yeah. But a girl's social circle, like you see these girls on social media, Snapchat, they will invite their social circle to their house or to these closed-off venues, non-public venues. That's that's the future, is non-public venues. It's like a house, house party, it's something. It's like a, You see these corona parties that are happening. Insoles are not going to be invited to that. A socially isolated male, a socially isolated node, you're not going to be invited to that. You're not going to even know that's happening until it happened already. And you're seeing the highlights of it. So that's so the, the pool of guys that are legible to get a girlfriend, to get a relationship, are going to become smaller and smaller as the public sphere closes. There is no more coffee places. There's no more restaurants. There's no more uh, any type of public activity. So your pool is quickly and quickly lessening. Online is not a solution to this. In fact, we know from multiple studies for a whole two-hour documentary that online is just not feasible. It's just not tenable for a man to go and meet his counterpart there. Uh, dead air. SPO, yeah, dead air. did you not want good. to introduce SPO. a second oh. topic? Uh, yeah, I can go ahead and do that. Um, by the way, do you want to just tell people how to how to how to uh, get on the call-in list? Yeah, I. The, I posted the Discord link, and you go. Yeah, the to Discord that link is in the description, yeah. guys. So if you get on and give a message in there saying you want to call in, we'll get you on. All right. Um. The uh. The next topic. Uh. uh, uh let's see here. We we're talking about the bar scene. Uh. The next topic is uh, another thing from uh, Reddit. Um. The alcohol sales. Okay. Alcohol sales going up, what, 500% since yeah, this that, uh, whole a, crisis? That's a part of yeah, it. Yeah, dude. People can, are, are going to be doing a lot more drugs and alcohol like crazy. Dude, people are going to be killing themselves with drugs, alcohol, and just straight up suicide. Like, this is going to. People's mental problems, like, you think this shit was bad now? People are going fucking nuts and on antidepressants and all sorts of drugs. 
this shit is is just dude we're gonna be living in a fucking psychotic hell in yeah. another year after people blow their fucking minds out on all sorts of shit and like, when this people, shit, between the say... isolation this shit is gonna be fucking crazy dude it's all like, got it's a, just, uh, ooh. i just got a dm from someone i know in um a very black i mean i could say what it's, it's memphis which is a very black city uh and they're saying fourth fourth of july protests are getting good meaning obviously shit's getting out of hand i mean and this is a city where you didn't hear about it in the news at all the last couple months with the riots but now suddenly these cities that were that lay dormant are start fourth of july all the fireworks all the alcohol it's it's ramping up again so yeah. it's gonna get good pretty soon the yeah. heat the unemployment all these things are gasoline to a fire a fire that hurricane needs a, season yeah a fire that just needs one black guy to get killed and it all goes aflame <laughs> You know, it just takes one. It literally takes one for millions to riot. So, you know, it, yeah. the match can be tiny. The match can be a centimeter. But the gas, yeah. we're just, we have this gas tank. We have these thousand gallon gas tanks that are leaking, leaking all over the floor. And that's, that's insultum. That's unemployment. That's social isolation. That's income inequality. All these things are going to, they're going to be the downfall of this society. If we only need a small match, that's what people don't realize. It only took one shot to start this uh the american revolution uh one shot at lexington concord that's what they say it's the shot heard around the world usually yeah. world war one the the assassination of the archduke it's 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 argued that that was the start that was one shot so it takes one small thing to you know one small catalyst for all this to start but um i'll read the second topic um that we're going to introduce here so the holiday season is going to break a lot of brick and mortar stores. Consumer spending is going to drop unless there's a recurring stimulus payment to the people, aka UBI. Here in New York City, it's projected 50% of businesses are going to be out of business. Budget cuts are coming, which means even more people unemployed. Another is the huge wave of evictions coming down the pike. Most city shelters don't have space to handle 100k, 100,000 new homeless people in one week. If we have a surge of new homeless people, crime will spike, and you will have an ingredient for mass social unrest. A month ago, it was police stations on fire. Next time, it will be. Next time, it will be. Uh, the U.S., unlike Europe, doesn't have a tradition of high youth unemployment. Youth unemployment, being in the 60 to 70 percent range, is going to be the norm for the foreseeable future. This will have major political ramifications. Just like famed economist Noriel Robini said, we will be in a greater depression for a decade. The 2020s will be a lost decade. How this country can hold it together for a 10-year depression? And there's a comment. This will lead up to revolution. The whole string of UBI experiment is meant to starve. So, yeah, there's, there's just so many calamities. We talk about, you know, we focus on the dating market. But the dating market is not going to matter once your city's on fire. Um, the stores yeah, are all looted. The trucks aren't coming in. There's supply shortages that we're seeing all over the all over. You go in a store. There's stuff that's out of stock and it stays out of stock. Restaurants. You know, I have a, I have a one of my dad's friends. He owns um, a business, a pizza business, and he says that the ingredients are hard to get, like for pepperoni or the specific cheese. Like that comes and goes. Like sometimes there's none of it, sometimes there's a lot of it, and you never know like week to week what you're gonna need. So they're stockpiling stuff all the time. So we're going into like once this stuff really hits off, dating is gonna be the least of your concern as a male. It's gonna be about keeping whatever income you have left, whatever job you have left, you know, whatever, uh, whatever family and friends you have left. Just, yeah, I mean, we're going to go back to the basics of Maslow's hierarchy of exactly. needs. Exactly. We're going to go lower because people in the West, we're, we're, sort of, we're sort of okay. Your food and water and electricity and your warmth and your clothes, we're taking that for granted all the time. We're taking that is just that is just a part of life. But once it's gone, that becomes a real big issue. Then you will miss it you very it. much. We will all miss it. You got it. a super chat. Yeah, there's a new super chat by Lycus. Because of the halo effect, most men don't realize that women are not inherently good within. It often takes a lot of rejection, 
for a man to be able to break out of the illusion of female virtuousness. Um, this is this is an actual psychological effect. It's called the woman are wonderful effect. It's a legitimate <laughs> thing studied. When people hear a female voice, they're inherently more trusted of that voice. That's why marketing, um, you know, progressive will have flow or it'll be more marketing will be focused on the female, um, the female giving that presentation to the audience. That's why females are more favored in the labor market because women are wonder effect. Women are wonderful effect means that society always trusts women more because it's the men who are the villains. And when you see movies and TV, who are the villains? It's never a female. It's mostly males all the time. Women are Ugly never ones, seen. Too. They're never seen as bad, but they're they're only seen as neutral or good. There's really no expo. There's no exposing um, the reality of it. The woman a wonderful effect is just it's just so ingrained into the society. You know, it's not the same anymore. It's not they're not the same housewives from the 1950s. The average female has changed a lot and she has gained a lot of power. She gained God status over males. Males are now ants. They're mere ants being stomped on. You know, the female has been elevated to God status. Every Steve Hoka says that every female is a mini celebrity online because these platforms allow them to be. You, these people have more followers than than people would show up to a rally of a famous politician back in the day. They have more power than that politician of of Abraham Lincoln, per se. Abraham Lincoln could never get 9 million people to follow him in one venue. But for a female, when she goes to TikTok and she has 9 million followers, she has that venue. Females have been elevated above kings, above monarchs of the past. They are the new Robert Barons. So it is very true. That is a high IQ point by Lycus. Yeah. Thanks for the super chat. Thank you for the super a... chat. Well, I, I think it's almost like it's, it's becoming like some somewhat like we're coming maybe like in, little insect colonies. You know, it's yeah. like you got a little queen bee in, in, in a few queen bees in each little small town. And they, they're kind of shared around, you know, and... Uh, if someone says in the chat, women are queens, yeah, it's, it's kind of like we're becoming like a little insect colony. Yeah, I think you called it the queen bee mindset, um, especially what happens in environments where there's a few females and a lot of males. It turns into the queen bee society where it's a lot of males competing and trying to mate with that one female. And most males are going to be left out. She's going to have her, her, her pick of the litter and she's going to make sure her social circle is whatever guy she wants. Depressing. Oh, bro. And and uh, you guys, start yeah. surviving, man. Uh... Yeah, focus on surviving, especially in America. Uh, most places are not as bad as it here is. I mean, if you're looking, like from if you're looking from a different country, it's like, man, you're you're glad you're in that country because America is no longer gonna be the Amer the American the new American dream. Like Matt, you pointed out, it's gonna be like a life of crime for most males. It's gonna be yeah. How do I? You know, how do I take back a house? How do I take a car? They're not going to find a way to... There's no more ways to move up the ladders the boomers had. Those ladders are cut. Nope. And lifted. Time to take it, yeah. That's um, what's going to happen. We're just going to start taking... You can it's become um, fucking the jungle, dude. Yeah, Fuck, the boom... Civilization is going to end. If it yeah, does. Civilization we'll is definitely teetering. Um, people who deny it, it just... Look at look at the, stat, the state of America. Um... It is it is accelerating to you know you know what will November look like you know what will Dude, what will this election it, yeah it might be the it might be the trigger for sure we'll see dude oh, Jesus Christ well high this civilization shit. will only work when you have high empathetic high IQ population who is able to put their needs of their own family and their own personal needs aside for the good of the whole you know and looking around at, at your at, at people who who are around you today. You don't see a lot of that behavior. You don't see a lot of that high empathetic. Mostly, you understand <laughs> people who right, just no. care about them, their family, their job, their children. Their, you know, they only care about me, 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 and my family. Civilization, a high civilization, will not last with that kind of attitude with most of the population. Yeah, there's a there's a actually a YouTube channel called um, Cartnarks. It's a it's a it's a small indicator of how bad it's gotten. People won't even put back their shopping carts in the fucking parking lot for the greater good of society or for the greater good of their even small community. You know, just put your shopping cart back 
and, and we'll be fine. But the, these guys, what they do basically is they go out and they and they shame people for not putting their cards back. But it's not gonna do shit. It's not gonna. No, it's not gonna do shit. But it's it's an it's an interesting indicator about how bad. Yeah. I mean, if you did that, if you did that twenty years ago, I guarantee you that guy'd be bored. He wouldn't be doing shit. But now that you got more and more undesirables in your communities, yeah, just leaving their cards wherever the fuck they want. Yeah. Oh, or, or or they'll steal the car and walk down the street because they you know they walk there and they'll steal the car and take it all yeah. over their house. What's also interesting. <laughs> That's why in the UK. I know, I know. In the UK, they have a, a system where you have to put a pound. Uh, I don't know if it's still the same thing. You have to put a pound in the cart in order to use it, so that, and you have to use another cart to get the pound out. So it's, I mean, it's worth it's worth it to the person to to go take the cart back. Anyway, go on. Yeah, what's interesting about cart narcs too is how vehement, like how hard the people fight just not to put their cart in. They're willing to fight, throw hands, to literally beat up another person over not putting their cart. Like ninety percent of people don't, they don't do it. They get very, very uh, offensive and very confrontational immediately. So there is no, yeah. sus- and especially in America, there is no social cohesion anymore. People move into neighborhoods oh, and they broken. move out. You don't know your neighbor. You don't know your community. Heck, you can't even participate in your community anymore. So you don't even know what's going on. You can't even go out and be with the community. The community is just done. And once the community First goes problem- to the Sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, SPL. Oh, I was gonna say first the problem with that. We, the reason we don't have communities because people, everyone's in just these different. Uh, no one has similar. Um, we don't have a homogenous society anymore. I mean, everyone's kind of like, uh, you know, there's there's three seven genders. There's you know, everyone's at each other's throats. There's all these different. In, in California, we have all these different sectors of different racial groups, and and everyone's just kind of com- in competition with each other. For more for more material gains that you know you can't have a community. How do you have a community with that? Unless you have a, a strong religious culture, uh, it, that's the only way you have a community. Uh, otherwise, everyone's just kind of at each other's throats to get uh, more in this capitalistic society. Yeah, I mean that's yeah that's there, if you want to get ahead. That's the you know it's the only way. There's you can do no it. longer being. I mean I. I know this is American centric because all four of us are men- America, but like foreigners kind of don't understand how things are deteriorating here so extremely. There is no more being an American when it was homogenous back. Oh God, no! Um, but you can all, That's why we have such an identity crisis: LGBTQTA, uh, the black, the white. You can no longer be an American. What is being an American? It means nothing. There is n- there. There's nobody that comes together for being American. You're black, white, Asian, Hispanic. You're LGBTQ, you're trans. People are looking for new identities to identify themselves because there's an identity crisis in this country. So, you know, there. so where are you supposed to go? You're supposed to align yourself to the extremes, I guess, and go out, either protest or go on the other side. Yeah, that's yeah. probably another yeah. reason that, like, half people are protesting, dude, like, because they, they there's that's the only way you can socialize now. Yeah. I, I, I guarantee you at least, like, 50% of people yeah. there just because I, it's like, I, I gotta get out of my fucking point. house and there's, like, people there there's you know there's girls there's guys there's whatever like you know like let's be fucking real because people have been pent up so long and that's what's really fueling fueling riots is people have been pent up so long in 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 isolation in quarantine and when when you see all these chicks out there you know as a man what do you think you think that hey i if i go on their side if i go protest with them that's an in that's an in bro so men are always nope. constantly looking for avenue, avenues to 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 just get a girlfriend or just to get something, which they have none online. They're sitting in quarantine, getting nothing online, getting nothing, getting rejection after rejection, block after block. Nothing, none of their tactics work. It just doesn't work. But they see this on TV. They see people out there, and there's like, why not join the riot? You know, male insuldom. This this issue of not pairing people up, the loneliness epidemic that men are facing is going to drive riots. You know, if, if you, there was a good, um, on Joe Rogan, there was a, it's called, um, rising. I think it's the news organization or something. I don't know if anybody knows what that is, but they, one of the co-hosts literally, he said that the best advice he can give to the American administration, the political establishment is to incentivize for 30 year olds to get married, you know, one man per one woman. Because that's going to that's gonna be the only thing that's going to stabilize society. That's the only thing that's ever stabilized society. Society was always chaotic until we had monogamy. 
And our wisdom, you know, we, we thought we knew better than our ancestors. Our ancestors lived through thousands of years of collapse and re rebirth. And they wrote in lots of religious texts on what, what type of social contract you have to have as a model for society. When you, that social contract disappears. And this social contract I talk about is if you're a male in society, you're, you're going to act well. You're not going to use your force that you have as a male, your strength and your cunning to harm the society. Because society is going to guarantee you a chance, a fair chance at work, at stable work, a stable access to buying property, and stable access to a pool of marriageable women. That's what the boomers had. And that's why society was much more stable than it is now. Once that social contract disappears, they say that men aren't entitled to relationships and sex. Well, then society is not going to be entitled to stability. It's not going to be entitled to safety. It's not going to be entitled to men that have nothing left to lose making other people lose so that's going to be a problem Good yeah point. you gotta be a fucking idiot to like go protect people that hate you and don't like that you like also a world that doesn't give you shit just just wants everything oh. from you, you know you know what i mean like just tax your fucking ass your whole life shame you like hey, you're gonna that go out there and me. fucking be a hero I gotta I got a, uh, a sound clip from one of the protests. First knows what it is. I don't know if we can... Can we play it on here somehow? Uh, we must protect that. What is it of? Is it, it might be copyrighted. What is it of? It's... Um, God, it's like a guy with a really effeminate voice. Obviously like a white guy. You can DM Probably. me the file and I'll play it on the air. Uh, <laughs> it's, the, it's the ultimate of like, why are you protecting these people? Uh, let's see. Let's see. Yeah. You, you know, that's Did you why... see that... Uh, that new did you see that fucking Navy SEAL guy or whatever? Was he Navy SEAL who was, who was like, why did I fight for to protect these people? Like, he made it in headlines. Like, why did I fight to protect this country? Like, he was just... You, just, you, just, you had to have seen that. Did anyone see that? No, I haven't seen that one. Just, like, no. being disgusted by the shit that's going well, on. A lot of, I see a lot of police claiming to quit and uh, walk off their jobs and be disappointed. Um, you know, th th there's a woman that... She's a police officer. And after shift, she went to McDonald's. And they made her wait for her meal... And apparently she thought that's, you know, that's a regular procedure apparently, but for most people. But she waited on her meal and she thought that they were going to tamper with it, which never happened. And it's, you know, female cop. And she, she said that, you know, <laughs> it just shows you that even, even these police are not going to be able to handle it forever. You know, they, when the Soviet Union collapsed, the police became another gang. They became corruptible. And I wonder yeah, if that's what we're going to see you. too. Yeah, the police I mean, are. It's out. already, it's already not even the there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only thing that the police are worse. going for them is why they're so stable is because America pays us cops really well. It, it, yep. they all make top ten percentile wages. Top ten percentile. Yeah. It's, it's. Uh, mm -hmm. These people have an incentive yeah. to be there. To, you know, when there's it riots, they be... make a ton of overtime. They make overtime and double time standing there. You're, oh, yeah. When you're doing a riot, you're paying cops a lot of money. They're making a lot of yep. money just standing there. You know, their hourly rate must be like 32 bucks an hour. But when it's overtime and double time, now they're getting 64 bucks per hour because you guys decided to riot. A riot's always a big <laughs> payday for the cops. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You know, some uh, older guys uh, like me and older, my, my, well, probably older than me, would remember a time where you know police being a police officer wasn't really a career same with the teacher it wasn't really a like a like a profession you know it was something like when you told someone oh you want to be a police officer or a teacher you, it was kind of like saying you want to be an artist you know it, it wasn't like it was something you had to like move you had to leave your hometown and just kind of take whatever job you can get it, it wasn't something that was like a high value profession but now today it's like you become you do you do that for was it a four month class the police officer in California, and you're making 45k a year starting oh, no, in, in, in a bigger probably city. Probably, like, probably close to like 90 for California. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, just yeah. It's yeah, it's starting. It's a, that's first year. You know, a lot of guys think it's attainable for them when they see that they. That's one of the last jobs if, uh, as a guy. You can get insurance benefits. You can get a pension. It's one of the. Oh man. Oh fuck! Sorry. God, OBS is just everything's just trash. The software. Can you get it back or? It's live now, I think. Yeah, we're probably gonna. Yeah, you guys live. can you hear it. Can yeah, you guys live. hear it? Yeah, we should be live. Let me try to play this audio file. We're back. Um, Franco sent over.
Dude, like when you go offline, you lost like 20 people, like that. Yeah. Fuck, Fuck. man. People, people have no patience. Like, nope, out of here. Does anyone hear Fuck that? Fuck these guys. Gonna... Yeah. Right. No, sorry. I didn't see any of the uh, rubber shit. This is a state of emergency. The police should not be here. You guys don't hear that? No. On the stream? Nope. Oh, it'll probably play on the live on the YouTube, but it won't play on the uh, Discord. Oh, okay. Can anyone Where's check if it's playing? Oh, it is playing yeah. on. It is playing. Yeah, everyone just be quiet, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, listen to this. Yeah, they're definitely gonna. I didn't see any of the rubber shit. This is a state of emergency. The police should not be here. Black people are being shot down in our streets. We must protect them. What the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? Oh my god. Yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was that of? I, I couldn't hear it all. It's, what he um... says, I heard some gay guy going, we should not be here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> We should not be here. Oh, I've fucked up the ass. I like it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's what they were doing. The propaganda um, channels at these protests had the, these gay lisp, and it, it just, it just, uh, it just clown world. It's just, it's just the perfect clip of clown world. I'm glad uh, Franco was able to capture that. It just so, and it's, it's so hilarious. What? And even the people at the protests are perplexed. Like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> what was it of though? I couldn't like I couldn't like use I was, a, a tranny. Just I was watching a riot live stream and that just came up and I'm like I, I gotta I gotta cap this. But it, it was it it was someone from like a car like they had a, or a, uh, they had a mic uh, megaphone or something like that and they're and they just it was either a recording or it was on the spot. Either way, um, yeah, that's all it was. I, I have no more information other than it was a riot and it was like a gay guy or a tranny. Oh my god. Oh my god, shame me. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Like that you only get that voice from getting fucked up the ass, like over and over again and liking it. Like that's such a mm, Jesus. Um, Yeah, to those guys, would... black guys matter, right? Yeah, yeah. oh yeah, they yeah. fucking love it. Yeah, they they absolutely <laughs> matter to them. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. They're getting fucking pegged after those fucking you know they're getting fucking pegged after those. Right. Yeah. For 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 people for Hey hey, black black pill blues the blues needs to cool with the fucking homophobic here. We don't support that on this channel. This guy says, Who here thinks life was better when gays lived in fear? Hey, come on. Cool it. Whoa, we whoa, support whoa. gays on this channel, bro. Stop with the homophobia. Yeah, man. each gay is one less man competing in <laughs> the dating on. market. Each, I mean, Absolutely. a lot of men are going gay just to escape the freaking dating market. You know, I don't. I don't, I don't I'm kind of joking. Yeah. I, so, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, you know, uh, and it's and it's uh, you know, let them go gay because that's that's less males in the competition. That's less males. Yeah, I, I don't think the male is able to uh, his sexuality is in flux like, like like the female is though. I don't think he can change it depending on. I think the female can, but I don't think the male can. Yeah, the females tend to be like bisexual now. That is, uh, you know, that's uh, yeah. The you know, well, trisexual. Yeah, the... they got they got males, females, and dogs. Yeah. Yeah, they got their dogs. Yep. Yeah, that's their number one right there. The dog. Roof, roof. <laughs> Do we want to introduce the last topic for the show? Yeah. Do uh, you want to read it, Franco? Sure, let me see. Are we on? Oh, I sent that. Is it alcohol sales are up 500%? No, no, no. Yeah, we already talked talk about that. Uh, we talk I about sent that. it to you. Okay. Oh, all right. This is, a, uh, this is a tweet from some state. Reddit, I think. No, it's Reddit. Yeah, it's on, it's on Reddit, but it's a tweet, I think. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this this woman who's a Stacy obviously is saying the dating pool for young women is literally porn addicts, sensitive guys you have to perform constant emotional labor for, narcissistic if not sociopathic gym bros, emotionally distant manipulators, and performative woke men who still treat women like shit. And uh, that's that's her take on the dating scene. So that's um, a woman's complaint on the dating scene, huh? Wow, that's that's quite that's that's quite a take, man. 
Do you think it's a real woman by what she's saying? I, I think it yeah, is. It I think it's a real like, woman yeah. by what she's saying. Yeah, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna get I, it up. I'm gonna get it up I mean, on the stream right now. So. Okay, good. Uh, I'd say at one point or another, even I've fall, fallen into one. I mean, probably emotion and distant manipulators. But, but other yeah, than that, sure. I mean, it's yeah, it's not. If that's your if that's your issue with the dating scene, you're doing pretty good. I mean, she just listed off five different types of people that she has access to. If if you get a, a, your average incel on there, you go, the dating pool for young men is blank. I mean, there's fucking nothing for for, for your average bro. But um, yeah, and, and like and like I think somewhere I think I saw this somewhere. I think it was on our Discord, and they said she's complaining about five different types of Chad, and that's what it is. She's <laughs> complaining about five different types of Chad. Oh man, let me see here. Pretty hot too, of course. Yeah, she is. She is. Yeah, she's getting fucking just railed from all sorts of shit. It, it makes sense. It makes that. sense. Um, uh, you know what this is from? This is this was found on. It was posted by somebody. I'm not sure who it is. Um, and I saw it. It was from a subreddit called Female Dating Strategies, FDS. And female dating strategies is basically like kind of like red pill, but for women. And what they what their terminology is is um, LVM, uh, NVM, and uh, HVM. LVM is low value men. And then there's NVM, no value men. And then there's um, HVM, high value men. And basically, their strategy is not about getting a guy. Like the like for males, it's just about getting one girl. You know, that's that's all. You know, they're starving. But for women, it's yeah. to ignore the thousands, the legions of thousands of low value men and no value men, and their and their quote unquote. And to only focus on getting the high value men they want and and they they so deserve, you know, um, it's this. I remember seeing a subreddit. It was like near when Corona started. This was thirty thousand. It is now over eighty thousand, and it's not been purged. Most Reddits get purged, even you know, they're, of they of they're a bit on the fringe. This one is legit. It's anti male. It's legitimately anti male, and we're seeing the genders just drift apart. Because when women go online, when when the guys they pick, the guys they picked pump and dump them. Because a Chad that they they're gonna pick, he's just gonna have all these options, and he's not gonna settle down on one. So a lot of women are gonna be left pumped and dumped, and then they then they then they project this stuff where they say, "All oh, these top these five guys that pumped and dumped me, they're just like this," you know, and they they're post they're narcissistic. Yeah, yeah. One of the most common things they post is that so many of these guys just want friends with benefits. Friends with benefits. It's like. Dude, these guys aren't incels that are asking for this. A guy that's asking for that has options. They're they're all this is the apex fallacy that the females create because they're polygynous. They go only for the top males. Females are almost fine in they can maintain sanity sharing a, a one top guy that has his income in check, has his own place, is a chad, has his height and you know. These are the guys they're going for. And these guys are the exclusively they're going for. They want nothing to do with 80% of males. They would rather just be in this game. And there's so many of them say, I don't care if I'm a cat lady. I don't care what these men say. Because the men who call them cat ladies, these MGTOWs, these gray-haired guys that are 50, 60, why does it matter? You know, they still believe there's a female wall. There is no female wall, guys. There is no female wall. There's plenty of online to prove this. The female wall, there is a male wall. There is a male wall, and it's getting younger and younger. Because men are losing... There are more and more options in their social circles. Social circles are deteriorating. The way men used to pair up with women, that's all disappearing. So, and this says everything. Go on female r slash female dating strategies and see how it is. See how the females think of this. They they are they know they are entitled to the top percent of men. That's what they know. You know, and low value men and no value men, what they call just get in the way. They are literally pests. That's how they view most men. When you reach out to her, you're a pest. When you cold approach her, you're a pest. When you text her, you're a pest. So this is this is just the uh, it, it shows the two genders being completely alien to each other for the most part. Espe, are you still there? Espe, I'm here. I'm here. What do you yeah, think I was, about that? I was just gonna say. I was just gonna say. It's just. It's just strange. It's just they're 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 talking to these certain guys here. Uh, I mean, they never put two and two together to realize that, uh, you know, maybe they're getting pumped and dumped. <laughs> guys, Wait, you know, 
<laughs> you guys, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was just look, looking up this chick's Instagram. She's first off, she's fucking, she's fat. But <laughs> this, oh, this, this is the woman. This is the woman who did that post. Yeah, it's on. Yeah, the, it's yeah. on a live stream the, right the, now. One of the posts. One of the posts on her Instagram is <laughs> from May second, and it says throwback to living my best life in Ghana, and it's a bunch of pictures of her in fucking Ghana, Africa. Holy shit! What the fuck? Great. Yeah. Yeah, dude. This is, and she's 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 British. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Ice Cat, but she's British, man. Um, <laughs> oh my oh, god! And she's got a dog. She's got a dog. Okay, I'll, I mean it's not doxing her because it's fucking her shit. It's it's Hannah H A N N A H X W X underscore is her Instagram. I'll I'll post it. I don't want to get. I don't want to get accused of doxing people. Oh yeah, we don't want to dox views, her. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway. Um, Man, it's brutal. She she was in Ghana in May. I mean, this is during quarantine, man. And she's going to fucking BBC land. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> Good lord. Ooh, yeah. Why anyway, trees go go like oh my goodness. <laughs> it's the British visiting, revisiting their old empires to virtue signal, like um Ice Cat saying yeah. you know, these females. Isn't that, females isn't that have cute? a crazy uh affliction for traveling. It's insane. Like Man, most guys just want a stable relationship, and they can't even get that because these women, they're bipolar as hell. They will go from city to city, from town to town, from state to state, to country to country. They, Oh, I'm in Asia now. Lol, I'm in Ghana now. Oh, I'm back. <laughs> now I'm in this city now. Oh, oh, I moved. I took everything and moved. It's insane. These women are... <laughs> You can't even first pin him down. Yeah, bipolar. Like, look it's at what bipolar. she's. You know, it's almost like she's looking for someone who's bipolar. Because look at what she's saying here. She's saying uh, she doesn't want a sensitive guy, but she doesn't want a narcissist. It's like it's like she she she's trying to get something in the middle, and you know, not too far on on either side. But it's like it, what, what her expectations are. You know, emotionally distant is too much. Too it, well. Usually, you know, you're gonna get. It's, uh, what, what, is it, what does she want? It's like her requirements are. I mean, it's almost like she would have to find someone bipolar who kind of goes on both. He's a he's a nice, uh, uh, exciting, edgy guy, but then uh, sometimes he's the nice, uh, soft guy too. It's almost like you have to be some kind of bipolar cl clown to to please a girl like this. Um, yeah, because the emotionally distant thing, if you're not emotionally distant, you spam her with a bunch of texts every day and tell her good morning, good, that's not going to work. So, and then, and then, um, being too emotionally distant, that's not going to work too. So the man they want just doesn't exist. The, 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 it's like the, it's like the analogy of the, of, you know, the, you've heard about the husband store and they keep going up floors, you know, the husbands keep getting better yep. and better. And it's like, at the end, it's just a roof, and there's no husbands at all. And they said, every woman probably did this. They kept going up and up. It's the men who settled. Women don't really settle. They Their ambitions are, they get higher and higher each year because it's allowed to, because they get more and more options each year. Yeah, that's why she wants to travel. It's because she wants she wants more exotic options, too. Yeah. It's not, it's not good enough if she's in Liverpool or wherever the fuck she is. It's she wants to go to fucking Ghana. She wants to go to China. As they're saying in chat, she wants to, she wants she wants Chang and she wants Tyrone. Um, the, and that's why I kind of liked the whole um, lockdown because no one was traveling anywhere for a good couple months, and I thought that was great for um, <laughs> women like this. But now, of course, it's gone back to quote unquote normal, and they're doing the same shit they used to. Yeah, I was really hopeful that. Um all these planes being grounded that we it's finally could end this clown world where these women are just virtue signaling around the world they're traveling all over the world it's such a negative for your community for because you're spending money into foreign economies you're not spending them into your own local economy it's the guys that are left over they're not taking care of their parents they're not taking care of their families they're not taking care of their, so, their f social circle they're not putting tax money in as a guy you're left here you're left here with the riots you're left here with the social yeah. upheaval while she's in ghana you know or she's, or she's fucking canines. Uh. Well, I, hey Matt, um, I know you want to get back to working on your Miata. I, I, I had an, yep. another car who wants to get on. Thanks so much for coming All right. on. All right, bro. Talk to you if, guys later. Uh, when Peace we change the next Thanks topic, we'll, yeah, yeah, when we go to the next right, topic, later. feel free to call in. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Matt. You're always great to hear. All right, yep.
All right, no problem. Thanks for having me on. Later. Later, you, Frank. Franco, chat. Later, Matt. Later. <laughs> Later, Matt. All right, we got uh, another caller who wants on here. But man, great topic, you guys. I um, it's I just yeah. don't understand what the what the what what women what they're where they're going for. But what we got to re- remember is that what they say is always not always what they actually go for. We got to always put particular. Yeah, there's a lot of nuance we, in this. Oh yeah, it, it just seems she's been it's ran through. Never what they want. Yeah, she's been ran yeah, through by all these yeah. guys. Um, that's how it is. Uh, these, these women always have the options, but you know, aside from, let's see, aside from porn addicts and sensitive guys, she would take all of these dudes. Yeah. Aside from the first <laughs> two, she would, she was legitimately like, she'd fucking take, she'd take it from all these, all, the last three. She, she wants all those guys. No, it, you know, you got to read yeah. between the lines. This, this, is what happened to her. These are the five guys she's recently dated and you <laughs> that's, know, true. that's what happened. Yeah. yeah. But I'm saying she would revisit the the last three. I mean, yeah. sensitive guys. That's tough. That's tough for a Stacy porn addicts. I mean, who? I mean, anyone can be a porn addict, I guess. But yeah, no coomers. No coomers allowed. So uh, Albert's on wanted... the wanted to get in on the topic. Oh shit! Oh hey there. Can you guys hear me? Albert Pack. Yeah. Yep. The big packs of knowledge. <laughs> the <laughs> super packs of knowledge family this. packs of knowledge. <laughs> uh, no, I was just Maxer. I want... <laughs> well, I was just calling in because uh, when you guys talked about the girls and the travel, that reminded me of this uh, this girl I knew who was straight out of high school. You know, she was able to got, start traveling the world. She went all over Europe, all over Asia. And the thing is, she would like basically record her travels. And here's the thing about women. The advantage they have when it comes to traveling is that people trust them and people want their company. So I remember like sometimes she'll be stuck in like Barcelona, for example, and she'll just like leave a little comment like, hey, I'm in Barcelona, me and my friends, we need a, you know, we're girls, we need a place to stay. Anyone want us to come over, you know, uh, go uh, uh, couch surfing? And she'd immediately get replies, you know, from men, from women. Everyone's kind of cool with her coming over. But as a man, especially if you're a single man traveling by yourself, I don't think you're going to get that trust from people like so. You know, it's just it's not only that they can travel, they can enjoy the experience because, you know, they're they're catered to and they're welcomed into these countries. That's actually true. I've seen this post. It was like a black pill post. And it said that men aren't so much keen on traveling for pleasure because the the world inherently looks at single men as dangerous. It's the woman that's like the super chat we had. It's the woman are wonderful effect. When you have women coming into your country, it's great because that's that's an extra female. It's same in the United States. We've observed this because there, when when immigrant female comes to like a workplace or a college, guys see that as more attainable than the than the local woman. So they start they start every every guy starts approaching her. Every guy starts oh she's a foreigner. I have my chance. Oh she's from here. She's from third world country. And then so so by by one month by one month to be here, her standards rise higher than the locals. Higher than the locals. So mm. yeah, and it but how did she fund this traveling? Um, that you she she got free couch serving like any female any guy will there, oh, there's so many apartment listings women will never be homeless because there's so many guys offering free freaking rent you know for a female only dubai bro yeah dubai but how did she afford to i mean i'm i maybe missed that but she couch served but still like you got to pay for plane tickets and um was that being paid for by guys beta orbiters or yeah, I mean, no. she she was very uh, she was very attractive young woman, um, natural double D's, the whole thing. She never specified, you know, they don't talk money, so she never specified how she was funding it. But she basically was just a bunch of friends that would help her out, you know, because um, basically there, she had a really big friend network, um, and she just I, I I don't know exactly how she did it, but she basically would just kind of go place to place, meet up with people she already knew somehow. And she would just go, you know, basically have everything catered to her. Now, and the thing is, she was very open, you know, that she was, you know, going to the clubs and bars. She was sampling all the local men, you know, that she wanted to try out. Um, the only funny thing is that the only country she visited where she didn't have sex with a local man was when she went to China. Oh. And, <laughs> oh. And, but, but I want to say this, though. She hated Chinese men because she's like, they're really, they spit. And they're really rude. You know, she said like they would basically like. Uh, I remember spitting is like, a problem in China. Yeah, they would spit in front of her, but they also say things like, you know, you're you're fat. You know, why why are you so fat? You know, and she, dude, she base Chinaman. 
yeah, and she said <laughs> she said she would want to cry do you think the reason why is because like uh, so so say if a woman goes traveling she goes to europe spain uh italy whatever she can go on a dating app and she can have a good day. She can have a good time and see yeah. some new environments to meet some new friends. But a guy goes to Spain. I, what's he going to do? I mean, he can't meet friends like just, just in one night on, on, a, on, a, on an app. He can't do that. What's he going to do? I mean, he's got to, he's got to either bring his own friends with them and do something. But, but as a, as a female, uh, they're able to just go, they can go wherever they can go on a road trip and they can meet friends on, on an app easily who will invite them out and they'll have a good time. So I also, oh yeah yeah and also guys are very territorial too like they kind of see you know like i first kind of mentioned like if you're a young man visiting a country and you have remotely intentions to sleep with a local woman you're like an invader you know you're you're a threat yeah. you know you're you're another yeah. man mm -hmm. in the dating pool that they don't want you know um you know but if you're a woman of course they're extremely welcome to that and that's why i think like you know let's be real like a woman can go on a trip with the intention to do whatever she wants if she wants to have sex it's okay no problem but if you're a man men who travel for the intense intention of sex they're sex pass they they fully they're fully aware they're probably gonna have to pay for it right um so it's just a total different lifestyle now i do want to say um I think why, one of the reasons why she also didn't have success in China is because, like, uh, Asia, East Asia has really, th they, they love thinness, you know, they're obsessed with thinness, right? And she was not, she was not fat at all, but she was curvy. But in, in Asia, curvy is fat, you know, so I think that's one of the reasons why they weren't so open to her, like, in other countries. Hmm. Yeah, but do you th do you think that I've heard from people that in the past it was men who were more into traveling, and it's kind of reversed now? Do you guys would you agree with that? Uh, I think I mean um, depends on how far back you're going because it used to be like because travel because the thing is um traveling was kind of a luxury until up until recent history traveling was always a big luxury and usually it was um men and men on uh, business trips you know yeah. with the suitcase getting flown out by the company you know to to a look to a remote location usually it was like it was work and leisure kind of tied together you know like for example yeah. uh one of the biggest uh, language learning software companies is called pimsler um they've been around for decades and they specifically um organized their course around treat treating uh businessmen um instead of like more like recreational kind of more casual um uh language skills so yeah it's, it was kind of like a business thing it was a, it was a very much kind of like a rare treat that the company would give you to fly out and and visit a like a different country different culture yeah i just think it's it, it's for for a guy in his 20s or 30s that i mean that that's a, a thousand two thousand dollars for for a bunch easily easily probably more like four, four or five uh, but I mean, if you're gonna go like, go out to eat and stuff, go to expensive restaurants, you're looking at a lot of money for a uh, one or two week vacation. I mean, I, don't you think a guy should be spending that on on a you know getting having a reliable vehicle, down payment for a house, you know, if he has a house, maybe paying down his mortgage a little bit. I mean, don't you think that that's more practical? I mean, uh, yeah, it's definitely more practical. I mean, let's be honest, like most of us are not gonna have that opportunity to travel anywhere. Um. I don't know. I mean, kind of, I'm really divided on that. There's that part of me that thinks, oh, it's good to be responsible, build a career, blah, blah, blah. But there's other part of you that's like, you're young only once, right? And it's, it's, yeah. it's once that youth but is gone, you're never, how, no how money, money, women, that back. How are they affording it? How are they affording it? Because they don't have, I mean, do you think, do you think there's a, there's a guy paying for it and she's just leaving him out of the pictures? She's just saying, hey, can you take my picture real quick? And she's leaving <laughs> the guy out. Who's paying? Like she's she, like she's seeing some guy who's like twenty years older than her who's paying for a trip to Spain, and she's just like taking a bunch of pictures for her Facebook. And oh, oh, can you take a picture of me? You know, she doesn't take any pictures with him. Or what is she doing? <laughs> How does she afford it? I mean, she's driving it. She's driving a, a beat up car. Uh, she's got student debt. You know, but how does she afford to pay for these trips? No, I, I think a lot of women just don't plan for the future. They live for today. And also, you know, a woman's attention is, is valuable. You know, it's money. You know, yep. there are people who are willing to pay. It, it's the whole idea of like paying uh, a woman needs to offer sex for money is, is bullshit. Is very. Yeah, it's it now it's it's boiled down to like attention, a glance, a smile, a compliment. <laughs> These are all valuable. You know, you have oh. a, that that one celebrity who sold a, a candle that smelled like her vagina scent and that sold out the day she released them you know so 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so like Gwyneth Paltrow and also there's another one. I forgot her name. Like even the scent, the the hint <laughs> of a of a woman's presence in the air is, is is money, you know. So I mean it's it's kind of crazy. I mean well the thing is, you know, there's also the old fashioned way of sex. Like it reminds me of uh, Lindsay Lohan. Um she was briefly quote unquote dating some um Korean billionaire guy named the uh, the Korean Hulk. You can look him up. He's uh he's a five foot four inch tall uh Korean power lifter. Is that like he fell for the powerlifting meme? And um, what's funny <laughs> is that on his Instagram, he had tons of photos with him and Lindsay Lohan. But you went to Lindsay Lohan's uh, Instagram, she didn't have a single photo of him. So who knows? Maybe like <laughs> she's meeting up. <laughs> maybe she's meeting up with these guys, like you said. And she's like, hold the camera, hold the shopping bags, you know, drive me around, and that's that, you know. And she's just, you know, her presence. Bro, this is, is hilarious. It's oh my sad. God, this is bad. Uh, yeah, female presence has been monetized because it's so rare now. It's so hard for guys to attain even that smile, even that look, even that conversation. It goes to show that incels aren't really looking for that so much sex as a real relationship, the girlfriend experience. Because what is OnlyFans? What is all this uh, super chats on on the these Twitch dots, right? That's all just female attention. They are looking for female validation attention. They're looking like to replace what their mothers, like the the, the male... A mother need you know and uh, it's so mm -hmm. unattainable now that you literally have to pay for it every girl over 18 is behind a paywall you and she doesn't have to bang you know Th that's why parents are supporting girls who are doing only fans because they're bringing a steady mm -hmm. income to the family they're not going out meeting johns you know they're not potentially getting raped or murdered like prostitutes put themselves in risk to do you know so it's it's perfect for them it's a perfect uh, new economy for the female but there is no only fans for males, you know. So what are the males mm -hmm. supposed to do? The economy is collapsing. All the females can go on OnlyFans, right? And that's how they mm -hmm. can fund their stuff. Mm. What? Well, well if the economy if the economy collapses, who's going to be paying? They're not going to men. They're not going to have money to pay for these uh, uh, OnlyFans. <laughs> Mm, maybe maybe it's going to be UBI. Maybe people are going to get their stimulus check and just shove it into a uh, woman's OnlyFans account. I don't know. Maybe it'll be like a welfare state for OnlyFans, <laughs> you know, yeah. to keep it going. It's sad to say, but it, it could be true. I mean, well, I've, you know, I've, I've read comments online like guys like, yeah, I spent my whole stimulus check on this so-and-so girl or whatever, you know, sex wow. doll. You know what's crazy though is like you know I mean Japan is like the num it's like ground zero for insult them right and they're always ahead of the curve when it yep, comes to coping by five years. when it comes to that yeah yeah and like they had a compensation dating back in the nineties where you know yeah. schoolgirls were were going on dates holding hands with like some old businessman for money uh, and now you know you have something like uh, you have the you have the um, the maid cafes where you pay girls to like bake and bake like a like a like a pie for you and then like write a cute message on it like a smiley face oh, and brutal. you know but but what i was thinking about though is uh, have you guys thought about uh, maybe it's just me this is just my observations but have you i mean we joke about worshiping women but i've kind of seen an uptick on on like on literal like female worship and what i mean by that is like witches and paganism like that seems to be on the trend and also in japan uh, amongst the otaku the incels they have something called where ba well we call it in the states waifuism where they'll basically fall in love with a fictional character and they'll dedicate their entire lives to that fictional character like for example that that guy who married um the the hatsune miku that that japanese like idol character girl and then you had the guy who married his body pillow like, you think that's going to be the new trend, too? Like, forget real woman. We're just going to start trying to make relationships with, like, pillows and toys and holograms. I feel like that's kind of the new trend. That is, that is, ahead. um, look at Blade Runner 2049. Uh, what did, what did the, uh, main character have? He had a digital wife. A digital wife that, um, and, uh, she, like, died in the movie and then she came back as an advertisement. So the guy was not buying the physical, he was buying the emotional. And this is Blade Runner. Blade Runner is an ac accurate vision for the future because technological progress keeps going up and the collapse happens. Like they have a whole seawall because of the rising uh, sea level. They have boneyards of just, you know, the collapsed societies, but they still have a, a like the downtown Los Angeles is still going. And that's Blade Runner 2049 is pretty accurate, I think. And look at look at mm. down, look at down. Guys are just using sex bots like androids. And but most most society is miserable. Most men are just completely miserable in that society. And they have they have their hologram GF if they're if they're lucky, if they're lucky. Mm.
And yeah, you're right. The wafuism, the the Japanese, it's all the the anime. There was a guy called Sha, and he said one of the trends, prevailing trends in book, is about um, it's polymory or what is it called? When it's not, it's not like polygyny where one guy monopolizes monopolizes a lot of women. It's a woman monopolizing a lot of guys. Yeah, yeah. Reverse and you see this in anime. Theory. Yeah, reverse harems, and uh, that's becoming like in the books. That's becoming a lot of sales. So that's uh. Yeah, it's it's a prevailing trend because you can follow these things, you can track these things, you can you can tell where society is starting to go, because the girls that read mm-hmm. these books, they're usually the queen bees of the twitters. They're the queen. They're the ones who, the who morph, what what most females are gonna think of. Because uh, look at females, they take one Stacy's Twitter and blow that up, and that's how everyone starts to think. It's like a hive mind. Yeah, Japan. Mm. Japan is interesting too. I think we are headed to Japan. We're headed. In some, in some liberal areas, nice areas, we're headed to Japan. And in some areas, we're headed to Syria or Somalia in some areas. Like Blade Runner 2049. It's a really good movie for the future. Because mm. Japan did start this compensation dating way back. Um, men basically pay to be around women. In When you come up to the, one of these dating bars, there, there'll be a woman will get in for free. And I, I took the clip for that documentary and the Black Pill Online Dating documentary from that where a woman saying polygamy is the is the answer for this and uh it just goes to show you what they really think but that's what guys were doing to the sex crisis in japan how guys are adapting to it is they're paying money to be in the presence of females you're gonna go to a bar and sit with a group of females and play board games or there's these uh these cafes where the the woman they dress up and they sing songs and it's all really bizarre it's all really dystopia but i i I read an article just yesterday about Japan and how its middle class is completely disappearing. They've been in a long, long decline since the 90s, since ever they since since they ever had their economic fall. You know, they had a rise. 1990, the richest country per capita GDP was Japan, and since then they've fallen. You know, as China rose up around them, as South Korea also rose up too. So Japan is, and they were the first to have hikamoris, neats, grass eaters, whatever. These men that are dropping out of society, sitting inside. But I don't think, Japan is a different culture. It's very homogenous. It's very low testosterone. It's a, it's a mouse utopia. America is different. America has a lot of guys that have the, the warrior gene or whatever that gets them into prison. You're going to see a lot more calamity in America than Japan. It's not going to go, maybe in the lefty liberal cities that have some soy in them. To lower that testosterone, they will have that Jap- Japanese model, but on the outside, it's going to get ugly, you know? Mm. Well, just to go back onto what you said about the um, uh, pain for to be in women's presence, I mean, isn't that something that's been going on already in bars? I mean, I, I remember the first time I went on an online dating uh, thing back back in like the early 2000s, okay? T- 2003, 2004. You know, I remember talking to a girl on there and she was saying that. Uh, uh, she likes to go to bars in her free time. Okay, red flag. But she says, uh, I was talking about uh, how, what, what, how many drinks do you usually get? And she was talking about, she said, well, I never had to actually buy my own drink. Even though I go to the bar every Saturday night, I never actually bought my own drink. So like, my, men have already been, you know, pay, paying for women's presence already. Yeah, that is a that is yeah. a good point. What are bars? Bars is... Um woman getting a lot of free drinks what is dating it's a lot of women getting a free meal just for the presence just yeah, for the presence yeah. that's we we've declined from paying for sex for, for paying for presence I, I don't know what's next <laughs> you know it's literally you're taxed as a male if, if you want to <laughs> oh man it, it gets so much worse it gets so and, much and worse they're... And some bars do even do have like a cover uh, cover charge just for men. I mean, the spaces. Is, is some a lot of bars do that. Oh yeah, definitely. Because where the women are, the men will follow. You know, that's all businesses know that. You know, if you get the woman, you get the you get the boys. You know what's kind of funny is um, uh, I used to um for <laughs> this is a whole different story. Now that's for a different time. But basically, like I I used to be um a youth pastor for a church right and they brought in this guy to sort of like take over the church and help it grow and he said something so black pilling but I I just ignored it at the time but he's like he was talking about how he grew another church by getting um he said he's like oh yeah I got the head cheerleader to come to our church and then when she came everyone else came you know and he was bragging about that but it was legit it's a legitimate strategy if you get a girl especially an attractive girl it could be a church a bar it doesn't matter 
there will be people who will be following her heels. You know, the where the Stacys go, the Beckys will follow, and all the men will follow too. Yeah, it is true. I don't think guys orient themselves to the Stacy. It, it is really like what you said, the Beckys. Guys seem to orient themselves on their looks match. They or their mm. attainability. Men are attracted to what's attainable. It's why you had this yellow fever in in white men like five years ago, because the, white men started realizing they couldn't get white women for all of a sudden. So they 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 switched their they switched their tactics to like oh Asian women love white men so we should all pair up, and then that started not to work. Then they went for Hispanics and now they're going for blacks. It, it's crazy. It's crazy how men are really attracted to to the female they think they can attain. This is why juggernaut law is such a thing. And it makes sense biologically that men will focus their energy on what's attainable. And what's attainable for the average man? It's these land whales. It's these mentally ill girls online. It's these, you know, bottom of, of the female strata that these mm. men will, will fall in love, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's a great point about the, the, the yellow fever thing. Because when you think about it, like... You know, white chads were are typically not going for Asian woman. It was the it was kind of like a nerdy white guy, right? It was kind yeah. of like the it was it was kind of like the lower value, kind of awkward geek white guy who was going for the Asian yep. girls. And of course, he would say like, "Oh, it's because they're so traditional, or whatever." You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh my <laughs> it's such god! Such nonsense. But but you know what? It's it's interesting. It's interesting though. Is that like um like I forgot? I wish I for saved. Sometimes I wish I saved these charts. But they were talking about like how um. Like they were talking about, like uh, the 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 incel them, and uh, it was broken down by by ethnicities for male and female. Like the, the how many people were I've having sex. I've seen this sex. graph. Yep. So you you've seen that. What's yep. crazy with the men? It was all it was all going upwards. The trajectory was all you know it was yeah. launching upwards like a rocket. But when it came to women of all races, it was just plummeting to a to like a zero, to like <laughs> an event horizon. And what's funny is that I feel like, you know, you know, in the previous history, we had segregation and we had, you know, there was a stigma against being with, uh, against interracial dating. But now that that stigma is gone, it's just made, um, it's basically just allowed women of all races to basically just pair up with whatever hot guy they can get, you know, it's just, it, it, it the sexual revolution was it just, it's, it was sold to men, um, but really just benefited women or at least, you know, yeah, it's because males, because the males of the boomer generation, they had a false sexual consciousness, and they also yeah. had a really good dating market. In the documentary, I linked that um, boomers they had an advantage of two to one. There was two eligible females for every one male. So they, of course, when you're a guy and you think like, I can either work in monogamy and get one wife, or I can get two women in non-monogamy. So that's what they thought. And but they but the early boomers, they screwed up the later boomers, they screwed up the Gen Xers, and it's been worse ever since to now where we come to our calamity that is going back to seventeen to one slowly over time. It's going two to one, three to one, you know, back to the eight thousand years ago when agriculture started. Here's a here's an update on the insul pro insul numbers. In twenty eighteen we got that famous uh twenty eight percent. Um, so now we have a new article, June 18th, 2020, recent study, why young adults, especially men, are having sex less frequently. A new, a new study indicates that men and women between the ages of 18 and 24 are having sex less often. That's That just contradicted the title. These, the, I mean, so many articles are dog shit now because they can't even afford an editor. But expect, experts say delayed adulthood may be one factor. They add the amount of material on the internet to watch may be also affecting personal face-to-face -face relationship. The experts say a lack of sex can affect a person's overall well-being. But here's the thing. About 1 in 3 men aged 18 to 24 years old reported no sexual activity in the past year, according to a new study published in the JAMA Network Open. Between 2002, 2000 to 2002, 2016 to 2018, past year sexual inactivity rose from almost 19% to almost 31% among men ages 18 to 24, according to research led by Dr. P Peter Yuda, a postdoctoral researcher at the in Stockholm, Sweden. Sexual activity, mm. uh, sexual inactivity among women of the same age remained relatively constant. There you go. So, you know, women they're able to still participate in the dating market. There is no dating market or sexual market for most men, you know, or or it's becoming like that. You know, that's that number is very undercounted that 30. Most guys won't admit it. You know, most guys will just not admit it. They need to start. They need to bring out the polygraph and then want to see the numbers, because when, when they bring out the polygraph in, in the sexual like 
men lie and women lie. Women lie tend to lie on a much more degree, you know, because they want to undercut their sexual partners. But men, men lie too. Men lie up, women lie down on their sexual counts. Bring up the polygraph and start polygraphing these. And let's see where the numbers go. Is it going to go to 50, 60? I think so. And and also that number doesn't also include the guys who are barely getting any, you know, yeah. like, you know, we're talking about the guys who, you know, they go to the bar every weekend to get lucky, like maybe three times a year or something, you know, it doesn't count those guys. It doesn't count the guy that got like one hand job and he's like, oh, yeah, that's my sex for the year. You know, it doesn't count for guys in like, un, you know, unhappy sexless marriages where they anniversary, they get like starfish sex. It doesn't count for the guys paying for hookers. The guys who are sugar daddies, like if you included all the number of guys who are not getting any, plus the number of guys who are just getting some or who have to basically be beta boxers or to pay for it, I bet you that number is way above 50%. In my opinion, I think it would be above 50%. Yeah, because you're just including just young guys that aren't getting any, but sexless yeah. marriages, you know, you know, when an economy goes bad, it's not that most people are unemployed. Like right now, most people do like, now it's 50-50 actually in America, but at least in the labor market, most people still have a job, but they're one paycheck away from homelessness. They're one week away from losing that job. You know, they're, if they lose that job, they're done. And that's how men are. If men, there's men that have a relationship that have some sort of sex life, but once that's done, and once they've been in this relationship and they go back in the dating market of 2020, these men are done. It's like Aaron Clary of his 14 years in his relationship. What, what if he lost that relationship today, how would he function after being 14 years out of the dating market? I don't think it'd be so alpha then. Yeah, yeah, good point. And, and also, another name you mentioned before, Coach Red Pill. Like, Coach Red Pill, he won't admit it, but he lives in Ukraine. He lives in, like, a, essentially a third world country where he uses his money to get girls. But he he portrays himself as being, like, a, like a silver-tongued, you know, charismatic, you know, playboy. Um, he doesn't like to point out that maybe his money is having a bigger effect than... Uh, than he gives the credit for it's being yeah. you totally yeah yeah that, yeah it's, I mean, you can you can play that game but you i mean you just gotta live with the fact that you're just being used by someone yeah because i knew i knew a lot of guys like that because i used to um you know a couple years back when i stopped when i stopped caring about you know what, about my life um you know i was going to strip clubs right and strip clubs are kind of like an old school way way of getting of the, of the sex trade so you tend to get older white men and retired guys there and, you know, a lot of these guys are just major copers, majorly deluded. They still, for some reason, even though they're at the strip club paying it for it, they still think like, oh, I still got it. I, you know, it's just, it's really, <laughs> it's really depressing. You know, but yeah. can, can I really hate them though? Because think about it, we're younger guys, but like, imagine going like 20, 30 years without a relationship. Maybe you'll just go crazy and start lying to yourself. Maybe you hallucinate a girlfriend or something. I don't know. Oh, that's the next <laughs> that's trend. Is hallucinating these uh, that's the next these trend. wafus. <laughs> hallucinate. It's, uh, we're we're going gonna to develop. It's going to be like Total Recall or something when it's like you're going to get in this bin and it's going to be getting a girlfriend. You know. <laughs> oh, man. It's it's scary yeah, what the, the future <laughs> lies of how, how men. There's going to be an industry driving. How do men going to cope? Because that is that is that is the conclusion we can all make. We can make a rational conclusion that most men are not going to get in stable relationships. They're not going to get into marriages. They're not going to have their own kids. Okay, so what will happen to these men? And I think that's where that cope. That's why you have a boon with these sex dolls and and this and OnlyFans. It's it's alternative goods. When 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 in economics when when people get when regular goods get priced out of people there comes a new curve in that dynamic it's called the, the alternative goods market you know so you know when when beef becomes too expensive people move to chicken and so that's what men are they're being priced out of the girlfriend men are being priced out of the relationship and how they're going to cope you know there's so many ways to you know track yeah. that um we got another caller who wants to come on for a bit if that's okay. Uh, he doesn't know if his uh, if his audio is set up, so let's just make sure he has his audio. Uh, Mr. Oof, are you there? Mr. Oof. <laughs> Look at his picture. <laughs> hey, can anyone hear me? Yeah, we hear you. Yep. Thank you, Albert Pack, for being online. I'm going to post Albert's channel. It's great. Uh, good channel, so I'm going to post it. No, thanks, appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Albert. Yeah, thank you for always, coming on, Albert. Always high IQ, Albert Pack with the big packs of IQ, the big packs of knowledge, <laughs> Albert Pack. The 
big pack. I'm a pack of heat. I All right. All right. It's great talking to you guys. Thank you. All, All right. right. Later, Have a good day. Good night. I'm not. I'm not really sure um, how out of sync the um, YouTube um, streaming is. So I'm um, really uh, up to date on what the topic uh, you guys were talking. Yeah, about. Yeah, Mr. Oof, we've been talking about a, a, a bunch of different stuff. We've been talking about the future of the economy for men and women. Uh, a lot of businesses have been going out of business, like like uh, re uh, retail, restaurants, bartenders. A lot of options that require no skill are going right. are shutting their doors. Uh, what's the future for men? We've been talking about uh, women's expectations in the dating market. How they want a guy who's uh, uh, nice, but but not too nice. Uh, he want uh, not narcissistic, but uh, you know they want this super um, middle of the road. All those really or, contradictory things, like yeah, that you don't get don't someone, someone unless they're bipolar or something. <laughs> what, what, yeah. Just what, what did you want to call and talk about? Well, um, normally I I stay away from like politics or. It, me and stuff like that because I'm not very knowledgeable about this sort of stuff. Like I know about it, but I, I don't try to be like a you know like I'm an expert in that, that sort of stuff. But I was hoping I could broach a topic about um, you know, red pill. Um, red pill is something I was um, I was quite familiar with when I was younger because I always thought, okay, um, these uh, these group of men they come up to you and they say we have the answer to your problems, right? It's all about your personality. It's not about what you look like. You need to go out there and do these incredibly unnatural things that nobody does in real life, like cold approach people. Like, who does that? But I did it anyway because I was young and dumb. And um, thankfully, when you do these to people, they, they don't remember who you are anyway because it's just anonymous things. But none of this stuff works. Um, it isn't until later on in life you kind of realize that um, I feel that most people who are preaching red pill are kind of looking for hope. Or at least what other people on on the forum will just call it a cope. You know, it's it's always that that kind of idea that there's always a solution somewhere. It's just out of reach. You just need to kind of go and do it and stuff like that. Um, I'm not saying I'm the kind of person who has exhausted all of his options because I I really don't know. But I've tried enough to know that that certain things just don't work. Um, I'm actually in my mid thirties now. And, okay, you um, you lost me there. What? Because. Red pill to me is just, it's not, I'm, I'm not good with all these phrases, black pill, blue pill, and all this stuff. But red pill, in my opinion, it just means you understand that there's differences in male nature and there's differences in female natures. And it, it, it's living your life in a way that kind of reacts to that. What, what, what do you mean by uh, red pill is wrong? What, what, what do you mean by that? Well, I, I wouldn't say red pill is wrong. They are correct in the way, in the sense that, okay, women behave in a certain way. And men behave in a certain way. What I think that's wrong is uh, where I think they come wrong is that you can do something to, to kind of like give yourself an advantage in that and make women want you and, and stuff. I don't think most of the things they preach work, like holding frame. It, 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 okay, imagine this: holding frame. Okay, you 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 get a girlfriend, right? And the whole idea of red pill is that you got to hold your frame. Well. How can you hold your frame twenty four seven? It's mentally exhausting. There's going to yeah. be one day where you just want to have a day off, you know, and just be yourself and just not have to have this macho bravado every single day. It's it's mentally exhausting. It's going to be a day where you're going to be forty, fifty, sixty, where mm -hmm. you're just too old to, to kind of like do this stuff. You know, it's it's tiring, exhausting. Yeah, especially if you're working a, a working fifty, sixty hours a week, and you know yeah. uh, you're supposed to not show any like, oh, you know, I had a shitty day today. You know, you, you can't say that because you know you gotta you gotta always be confident. You gotta always do this, but it's hard to do that when you're actually providing for a family. Yeah, and and, and there's gonna be a time where let's say your 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 parents have to go that the dead you know you can't show emotion there or like your, your favorite pet dog eyes and stuff you can't show anything it's, it's gonna fuck with your mind man you're not allowed to like be a human being i'm not saying cry um when everything goes wrong but like just important like kind of things that happen in your life um you know and, and you're supposed to like show frame just because you don't want to lose your woman that that's that's mentally exhausting I completely agree and, with you. Um, um, 
but holding a relationship is mentally exhausting nowadays with all the stuff you have to do, with all the stuff you have to compete with. You're competing with, when you're meeting a girl for the first time, you're not only competing with all the guys that are trying to get her at that time, you're also competing with her exes, because her exes have more history than her. Some of them are going to be chads, with, you know, with, some of the, one guy's going to be who took her virginity that she remembers the most, you know. So, and at many, any time, one of those guys can come back into her life and she's going to be gone. Being invested into a relationship is hard too. Not even just the frame part. The frame part is a red pill delusion, but just being in a relationship is exhausting for a male doing the dates because you cannot you cannot do one thing wrong. Because if you do one thing wrong, you will get shut down. She will start thinking, "Well, there's a thousand other guys. Maybe one of them will not do this." And she, likely, the odds are likely that yeah, one of them will be better. It's just the infinite pool they have. Yeah, um, I agree for the most part. And it's also because um, I'm not going to pretend I know um, what life was like in, let's say, like the 50s and 60s, but I can make an assumption that women, when they do get together with men, they tend to be, um, women tend to be like not career goers. They kind of kind of be homemakers and stuff like that. They mostly depend on their men. And they usually tend to be people with very low body count, or at least the culture back then. So they don't really don't really have uh, much to compare with. So the, the person they meet and marry tends to be the person they stay with life, and then they justify it to themselves like, oh, I guess this is how all men are like, you know? Uh, these days, like, uh, those with high body counts, the problem with that is that they meet one Chad who's, like, extra handsome, and they meet another guy who's not as handsome, but he's really smart, and they meet a guy, another guy who's not as handsome, not as smart, but he's rich and stuff like that. So as the body count goes up, they don't remember the flaws of the previous exes, but they do remember um, the, the aspects of their uh, exes that are good. So now they compare you to all of these exes put together into one kind of like mythical chad, right? So they're going to take the good looks of this X number one. They're going to take the intelligence of X number two. They're going to take the money of X number three and put them all together. So I want a guy who's extra handsome extra intelligent extra rich and and guys a, a guy like that really doesn't exist so it, it it's it's part of the problem why having in a date girls with a high body count is next to impossible because they give these impossible of like um goals to achieve for you you know to comparing you with every single ex they've ever seen yes into uh, one Stephon package, yeah. had a good video one of his best videos he talked about how the the chances of getting divorced goes up and down with each part i think i think if you i think the statistics went that um uh if you have if you marry someone who does no, has zero partners prior to you i think you only have like a 30 percent chance of having a divorce but if she has just one partner before you, it j it jumps up to like you know like uh, you have a sixty percent chance. Of I don't remember the exact amount. Unfortunately, step on Melanie's channel has been taken down now. But but um, it was just amazing how one partner it goes up to sixty percent chance of divorce, and then two uh, two partners now it's like seventy percent, and it just keeps going exponentially worse. You know. Uh yeah, um, because I, I like to think as well that um, if they have a high partner count, it also means that they get a lot of male attention as well. So they're less likely to kind of like bunker down with one guy because they 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 will go like, well, you know, I can do better. There's like yeah, it's a, it's a dating market and, thing. It's a dating market. Yeah. So yeah, they always have another buyer, right? It's like you're selling a house in a hot housing market. So you know, it, why why settle? You what you said about it is so um, high. Someone pointed this out. It's so high Q. What you said, um, because we had a we had a tweet from a girl. She complained about the five archetypes of guys she meets. And you're so right. Like they take up, they take the best. It's an apex file. It's all over again. They take the best part of each Chad they've ever been with. The, they take the height of one guy, the looks of one guy, the intellect of one guy, the money of one guy, and they combine that all into one male did like right. And you have to compete with this male. Once she has so many exes, it's like, well, you're driving this car. You know, my my ex drove a Dodge Viper. You know. My my ex he played for this football team. My ex was a baseball player. My ex was running, you know, he was a CEO, you know. It's like yeah. This happens I a mean, lot. And this what happens. These exes, they they probably just were were, were uh, doing a one night stand, but she's calling, "Oh yeah, my my ex played for the Lakers, you know. My ex <laughs> played for the, you know, it's like yeah, but he was just seeing you as a one night stand. <laughs> but she still it's going to affect her her ability to 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 pair bond. Yeah, the pair bonding is just gone in the society. Um, how can you, I? I don't. 
how can you look at these females and say they're going to raise healthy kids at this point? Like, because this drives narcissism. Um, we've created monsters out of women. It's not that they're inherently evil. It's that if, if a human being is receiving so much attention, that human being is not going to think that he's doing anything wrong. If you're getting validated, like all these guys validate these women 24-7, no matter what these women do. That's why these women become unstable. They become narcissists because there's no counterbalance to what they do. They're they can what if you, whatever you did, if you whatever you did was very was validated every everything you did, then you would you would start doing some off the cuff stuff, you know. That's why females yeah. females are just developing this extreme narcissism. Yeah, they don't have they don't have a dad that's gonna put him in check and say, hey, knock that off, you know, because because the dad was probably a simp too, and so he's got his little daughter and he's gonna raise him up to be a princess. I think um, I think um, their dads are doing what what they probably think it's right. I mean, if you have a kid, you probably just want what's best for them. But it's also kind of like that instinct to be a good father puts you out of sync with what what needs to be done. You need, you need to teach them like um, values and like how not to. Oh, an absolute yeah, but, but still, I, 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 you look, look at two parent families. They, they they're gonna they're gonna give different chores to the the. The daughter than the son. You know, the son gets the dirty chores. You know, the 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 uh, the girl. Sometimes the, the girl doesn't get chores at all. Like it's it's kind of it's like daddy's princess. You know. So but the the point I was getting to is that even as a father, if you're trying to teach them good values, girls are naturally rebellious. They they're always rebellious against their fathers. You know, they if you teach them something good, they're going to be rebellious. If if you don't teach them at all, they're just going to do whatever they want. So it's still like a lose lose game. Um, I, I'm sort of the firm believer that you can't really train women. They'll just do what they want. Um, so the the only thing that determines whether they can do what they want is whether you give them the tools to do what they want, which is pretty much where we are at now, 2020. With online dating, they can just, you know, look at the guy, decide instantly and just swipe left and, okay, yeah, good enough, not good enough, not good enough, yeah. You can't blame there was them. was a time. Sorry, yeah. There, there was a time before, like, all this online dating thing where, um, sure, women can still be picky, but eventually they're going to have to pick someone because the, the pool is so small. You, you don't have dating apps where you can look within a 20 mile radius of, of who's dateable. They can usually just pick whoever's in town or whoever's at the bar and stuff like that. That's their dating pool. Like, and guys, you got to pick one. How they have, like, now thousands of guys just waiting up in line and they can just pick the top i don't know five you know yeah i think that a lot of women uh they like there's so the most women go on online dating not to necessarily meet a guy but it's to get their validation fill um not a lot of stuff happens off online dating there's you know there's self-reporting data there's a lot of there's a lot of studies but the thing is is i think women they have an, an irrational fear of a guy um, that's just their nature and they're not going to meet some random guy off these dating apps unless he's really really something he's really attractive he's really rich you know so I think they're going to more turn to the whatever their social circle is or I, there's a woman that put it really good that way she's like why would I go meet a random man when I have a line of exes that that I know that are not creepy that aren't murders that have that I have good history with that give good sex, that know what I like in bed. So it's like, it, it makes sense. Once a woman gets her line of exes, those guys can, they can keep coming back and forth in. I mean, we've... Basically, it's we, recycling Chaz. Yeah, your Chaz are getting recycled. <laughs> she's, got, she's got a bullpen. <laughs> uh, there's, there's another topic I wanted to um, go on about. It's, um, it's kind of related to Red Pill, but it's more to do with like, um, just general advice normies give. Um, like they... They tell people it's it's kind of like the lack of empathy here. They, they, oh, women are not interested in you because of your personality or um, profile picture isn't right or um, you know, the way you carry yourself or you know, stuff like that. You know, just general hygiene, uh, general hygiene, like wash your uh, no, like like wash yourself, clean your room, all that other kind of like really general advice that they think it sounds like Jordan Peterson yourself. Yeah, it's it's all this really dumb advice that is actually room. like, it's it's because like I I really don't understand why people put these people uh these other people up on the pedestal. This is just basic advice that anyone can figure out on their own, and it's kind of insulting to have this advice 
thrown at you because they assume you're too stupid to figure that out or you don't know or you're really autistic or something along the lines of that. Whereas the, the real fact is that I sort of see dating as applying for a job. It's yeah. exactly yep. like that. And what these um, what these pickup artists do or, or what these other normies do, they said, okay, um, I had a look at your CV. You got to add this. You got to <laughs> add this. Oh, you got rejected from this job because you didn't put this in your CV and stuff like that. The, the position I'm trying to explain to them is like, look, it being like being an incel is not like, oh, there's something wrong with your CV. Being an incel is that the, the person who's trying to recruit people won't even look at your CV in the first place. That's the problem. You, you can you can you can complain about, oh, you have a shit personality. You have a you know, you don't shower or whatever. But how are you going to show that to someone who won't even look at you or, or won't even give you a chance at a date or anything like that? They won't know any of those things. So you can you can work on yourself until your face goes red. But if a woman doesn't want to go on a date and know who you are, this is all pointless. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, of course, work on yourself if Come you want to like... Five like, minutes. You can stay on. Uh, Mr. Oof, just want to stay on. I just got to call you. We have to say something real quick. Okay, hold no, on. No, 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 no. Bro, don't sure. bring in... Uh, bring him at the end. Because Mr. Oof, uh, we, we're still... I've moved No, no, he could... Yeah, he can stay on. He just... Uh, he wanted to say something real quick. Oh, no, I'm not trying to interrupt or anything. Yeah, you were supposed to come in in the end, but... We're, we're wrapping the stream up, but Mr. Oof has been making... Critical points, high IQ points after high IQ points, and uh, you're right. You know what the best way to get a job is? Is to already have a job, and that's the best way to get a relationship. It's a catch twenty two. You know, you need what's 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 woman's best um, verification for a guy if he's already got a girlfriend, if he's already got a series of girlfriends, because that shows he has something of value. Woman, they yeah, have like these... when you're applying for a job, like your the the guy who's applying is like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna need to see your reference, and they'll call up your reference and like, yeah, yeah, how's this guy, you know, and stuff like that. It's basically like like you know checking up with like your ex girlfriend, is she hot, you know? I guess you're qualified and stuff like that. Yeah, um, you know, your CV is always your previous jobs, and uh, they've done studies on this where. Females say they hate when they see men with other females in their profile pictures. But guess what? Guess what keeps the attention of a woman besides a dog in the picture? Besides a dog in the picture, what keeps men, women's attention most on dating profiles? If the guy has a picture with another woman, yes, they get mad, but their attention is more than the three seconds they choose for most guys on the app when they swipe left to right. So you get that retention when you have a woman. They've they've done studies on this. It's been quoted multiple times. There's there's a study. They took three pictures. One is a single guy by himself. One, he's a group with, with a bunch of other men. And one, he's a group with like a female or a groups of females. And the and the woman all rated the guy with the, with the um, overwhelming me. They rated the guy that had the female in the picture most attractive, even though objectively, like, like subjectively, overall, the other two guys were more attractive. So... It's like, like that's like the biggest booster. That's why I say like you do not live life until you're with a, in a couple and you're walking around town. You don't realize you you haven't lived as a human being until you're a couple and you're suddenly accepted by broader society. You're suddenly getting good good service at restaurants. You're getting expedient service. People are talking to you. Greeters, people at the grocery store. Franco talked about this yesterday. When you're in a couple, you get treated like a human being by society. Single men are just a warning sign and a red flag for everybody because it's like, hey, you're not part of this. You're, your society is not built for you as a single male. Yeah, it's, it's something similar to, um, I'm not sure if you guys are aware, like the halo effect. Oh, yeah, yeah. of course, of course. And then there's the halo effect, too. I guess that probably and, uh, applies to most of us. And, uh, <laughs> And yeah, he didn't succeed. He did address that. He called it the green check mark above your head. And when you're in a relationship, and you walk around and people see you with a woman arm in arm, uh, you have a green check mark over your head. Yeah, you're verified. That's what that's what the blue check mark on Twitter. You're verified in real life. Exactly. That's very yeah. high IQ. Um, you... I'm not saying I don't agree with that, but I think what I think another part of it is that. If you're with some, if you're with a woman, she feels that you're not trying to, you know, talk to her just to, like, you know, get a chance on a date. She feels like she, you can be real with her, you know, so to speak. You can be, you, you, you can, she can feel like she's comfortable with you. You can talk to her on a human level. You can talk to her in the moment. You don't feel like you're trying to get some kind of future expectation out of this conversation. 
you're just being real. You're here. You're in the moment. You already got a girlfriend. You already got someone you're with on that night. So she feels like, okay, this is someone who can be real with me. He's not trying to just talk to me for some future hope or expectation. It, yep. it, it's like it's like kind of like being used to, to to them. It's like they feel like they're being used. Like, oh, he's just talking to me because he wants this. He wants that. Okay, well, he's already got someone, so he's talking to me because he, he's just being real. He's just being in the moment, you know? Yeah, that's a good point, Hespio. Hi, Q, because um, when women know you already have a girlfriend, they, they ease up around you. I've noticed this because um, they know they're like, oh, he's not going to he's not gonna pester me. He's already he's already got one. That's good for him. That means he's, he's not a psycho. At least he can get a girlfriend. So, yeah, it's amazing the attention you receive it, in your social circle. Just, once it, you it, it relieves tension. It, it relieves tension because she feels yeah. like... Uh, you know, as you were saying before, women live in the moment, and they will t want to talk to a guy who's living in the moment as well, right? And, and a guy, and a guy who's talking to her for some future hope of expectation of, oh, I hope I get a phone number, oh, I hope I get a date. This guy's not living in the moment, so he's not. It's like he's playing. He's talking to an alien, you know. This yeah, guy I see. That's, that's what I see. How men and women interact. It's just two alien species now, because the the most people live online, and the two experiences of males and females are completely different online. Females are chased. They're they're exposed. They're oversaturated with male attention. They have to hide. They literally have to take a break from that because they're getting. They have to block so many men. Men, they they're looking at an empty plate with no crumbs on it. The crumbs have been taken by the chat. He's licked the plate clean. You as a you as a regular guy, there's not even a crumb to eat, you know. So the difference. So when you go to meet a woman on a date, she has all these exes, all these sexual escapades, all these chads, all these events going on. She's going out everywhere, and you will not keep up. A, a modern average guy will not keep up with the life of the average female. She's living a celebrity life, and you you'll be a fan, you know. And a fan, you'll get nexted for the next fan, you know. She's looking. She's a mini celebrity looking to pair up as a celebrity, you know. She's not looking for fans like you. You know, she you might be good in the moment while the celebrity's not there. But, you know, she's looking for that celebrity. Because she every woman's a mini celebrity now. And then they're gonna need a male celebrity. <laughs> Basically. You're as a fan, you're never gonna work out. Yeah, and it's uh I think it also applies to their personality as well. Like they're always thinking, Can I do better? And the the ultimate truth of it and it's it's just life. There's always gonna be someone who is taller, there's always going to be someone who's more intelligent, who's more handsome than you. So um when someone's you know, especially like I, I don't want to shit on Red Pill again. It's just that I, I, I disagree with some of the um uh, kind of aspects um they they kind of like want to teach, but like it's always going to be someone better than you. So no matter what you do, you're still going to stray. She's still going to look for someone better. And I think um, there's a there's a very very true quote. I'm not sure from where, but they always say women are only as loyal as their options. It basically means that if she's attractive enough to get other guys, she will go for other guys. She won't. She won't stay. Of course, that's if what she knows she can do that. Moment. That's what uh, that's what living the moment is. Yeah, they're very like. Um women's like sexuality is also very situational like if, like oh i'm sorry i slept with him he, he was just there and uh, it's like it's funny they do live in the moment that's so true it's the man planning his career out yeah i will get this phd i will get this job i'll get these internships and uh and, and then that that's when the girls come and then they don't come and then you end up in the rope in the noose you know but um we're gonna end the show really soon here i want to get um, I want to get Harvey Quinstein's uh, conclusion on this. He's our last guest for today. And after that, we're going to get the last thoughts for each member of whoever's left. The remnants. The remnants. And if you listen this right, far, well, uh, you're part yeah. of the high IQ, long attention span cells that can actually listen to the end of this podcast. So congratulations to you. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Congrats, peeps. All right, well, I'm actually glad that... Uh, Mr. Oof brought up the red pill because I'm about to say a whole bunch of red pill stuff. I, I've been converted. Uh, I'm actually here to sell my pickup book uh, for only six hundred and ninety nine uh, seventy nine. Could you uh, give a discount I, to I, people in the chat, like a 10% coupon yeah. that I can post a coupon code? Yeah. What's a coupon code I, yeah, I can post yeah, for people? Yeah. Um, let me see. I'll, I'll have to think of that, but I think I'll start out with poop probably. That probably the... Uh, a coupon code, but also I'll run my ads on your videos too. So like whenever 
whenever people start up your stream, uh, they'll see one of my ads and and basically my ad will be my ad will be something like this. Uh, you know, uh, if you're struggling with Luna, I have the perfect technique and I have the perfect pickup line. It's guaranteed to work. If you don't use it, you're an idiot. So basically, what you have to do first is you have to you have to examine what you're wearing, the clothes that you're wearing, your appearance. But but I'm not talking about bones and f f facial features. No, it doesn't matter. I'm talking about clothes and style. And the style that I recommend is a potato sack. So you need to be walking up to women in a motherfucking potato sack. And the pickup line. When you walk up to the woman, you walk up, you get ready, you get in the zone, you get your mindset going, and then you walk up and say, uh, and you say it exactly like that, exactly <laughs> like that. You wear a potato sack and you walk up and make sure that your shoulders are slumped and forward and maybe a little bit raised and, and keep your chin low and uh, kind of look at her with puppy dog eyes and rem remember, potato sack and the pickup line is... Uh, now is, the thing is, is this part of the oofy doofy theory? Uh, uh, sure, yeah, yeah, and uh, well, basically, um, as a Chad, you can you can wear a potato sack and walk up and say, uh, and then have a whole bunch of red pillars analyze your behaviors and then try to sell it. <laughs> the, the, the the it's doofy, primordial. Doofy it's doofy primordial. It goes back to our tribal. <laughs> The grunt, the chat grunt, it works because it's the it's how we were in a tribal before the evolution of language. The tribal chant of the chad, you know, it just works. And that's what incels need to learn. And uh, Harvey Quinstein, six ninety nine, yeah. ten percent off, which is sixty nine dollars with the code poop. Yes. Yes. So now it's we're gonna end after that poop. after that we're gonna end things with uh um Mr. Oof, do you have any last conclusions on the stream? Your last uh, second to last guest today? Uh, no, not really. Um, just just came out to just um, just pour out any random thoughts I have. But thanks for having me along on the stream. Yeah, thank you, thank you for being, and thank you for your Discord profile picture. It is amazing. I love it. Thanks. Until next time. All right, thank you so much. And uh, Espio, Bye. do you have any last thoughts on uh, what we talked about today? You stuck into the no. whole stream, so congratulations to you, Survivor. <laughs> No, it was a good show. I, I pretty much said everything I wanted to say. Uh, I think that there's just uh, uh, today. It's just um, I, I think when it comes to value, it's like it's a market. It's like you're going to. It's like you know. Let's say you're if you're in California and, you, and you're uh, you know you're used to going to Walmart for your stuff, and then uh, you know you're taking a trip out to this uh, you know where you you go to some small town that doesn't have a general store. And they're selling like you know they're selling like you used to have to get some tuna and they're selling a can of tuna for like five dollars. You see these little little store, and you're like, well, you know, at Walmart I can get this can of tuna for less than a dollar. <laughs> well, you know, but but it's it's just the the, the market it just kind of it is bringing up the, the the value of something that's really not that valuable. You're like, okay, I I can go to Walmart and get this can of tuna for one dollar. Well, that's what's going, and, and the reason why is because men. Uh, value it so much men put that uh, that that um men put that price tag on it through their desperation and so the the price just keeps going up and up and uh, that's my last thoughts on it yeah it is a it is a devastating a woman she walks into a store and there's so many options the, the shelves are bare the shelves are falling over there's so much goods they can't even stack them the, the yeah. prices are cheaper and cheaper. You know, she's getting rewards cards, offers, this and that. Buy two for one, three for one. And the male, he walks into the corona-stricken, the post-pandemic, post-riots store. Nothing. Nothing, not even a can of beans. The can of beans he picks up has been picked clean by scavengers. You have nothing. You have nothing but your bent fork, and there's nothing to eat. There's nothing, not even a scrap on the shelves. So that is the difference between the male and female. And Harvey, did you want to end the show with some, um, some something great? Uh, sure. Uh, shout out to yeah, shout out to Scott K. He called it. If you look up in the chat, he called it. He went uh, so he got it. You, you Scott Scott yeah, K. Already read practice. that book, by the way, guys. Uh, he yeah, he already read it. He read through the whole thing. He's my best student. He actually charged. Um, he actually paid two thousand uh, dollars, so he gets like the gold membership. 
Uh, he he gets like the blue check mark next to his name. Congratulations, Scott K. Yeah, hell yeah. All right. And rem and remember, it's about looks, boy. Hell yeah, hell yeah. All right, you heard it here last on the Insulmatics. This was our Fourth of July show. I hope you guys were able to cope through this holiday. You know, it is the Independence Day, but independence for who? And that's how I'll leave you guys off. Thank you so much for all the callers. Thanks you so for all the viewers. This was a great chat. Thanks for all the co-hosts, Espio, Franco. Uh, you guys were great. Thank you so much.